currently live. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, actually, it actually popped up on my phone. Hey, how about that? Was, that? that was quick and effective, and almost yeah. sounded like we knew what we were doing. Yeah, and, and clearly we do because we're professionals. All over this shit. Okay, so let me retweet this for my followers. So I'm going to put in um, the 2000 and whoops, 2019 Challenge Cup Challenge Cup Final Live because that's what we're doing. We do everything live. Well, nearly everything. No, it's everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, posed a bit of a question at the moment on uh, on your Twitter, I did. Um, that yep. was, who's going to score more today, St. Helens or the English cricket team? I think at this stage it looks like St. Helens, hey? Yeah. Because England, I mean, England, they're not like Australia. Because Australia, we're good at, at rugby league. We're good at cricket, and we're also good at basketball. We bet America today in basketball. You know what else Australia is? Mm. Unbelievably humble about their their achievements. Because we win I, so often, we don't feel the need to brag about it when it happens. We just go, yeah, we're used to it. Yeah, it's just, you know, expected. Like, it's like, oh, of course, of course we beat America in basketball. Yeah. You know? Like, we're a nation of what? Less than what one percent of their nation size or something like that, population size, something like that. Yeah, it's something. To, I mean, what what they have in one capital city, we've got for the entire population of Australia, and yet we can still beat them at one of their um one of their major sports because that's just what we do. And we had, you know, very good players out as well. Yeah, well, you know, we did that intentionally because we didn't want we didn't want to put them to shame. Yeah, exactly. We like to have a fair contest. Like we're doing Speaking over there of, in the cricket, because, you know, we've decided not to have Steve Smith playing yet. We're still caning the palms. Yeah. Well, and we, we rested him. And, um, yeah, it's just like... It'd be nice if England gave us a little bit of a challenge in cricket every so often. You know, they like to do it once every, what, 30 years or something? Yeah, just... It's yeah, not but, enough. But usually they only do it when we decide not to stand over any superstars. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it'd be good for a challenge. And, you know, in a challenge in sports other than darts. Yeah, I mean, I don't consider darts to be a sport. Oh mate, no, they're athletes, man. Check them out. Uh, ex- exactly. It's like darts goes in the same thing as snooker and bowling. <laughs> snooker, I love that. Mm. <laughs> It's like, yeah, it, it, like there should, there needs to be some sort of official difference between, like, a parlor game and a sport. Yeah, if they could bring in, say, body contact in snooker and darts, mm. that would be awesome. That would be pretty cool. Like well, between each between each set in in darts, you have to have like a one on one hit up, and whoever makes the most post contact meters will count as their first score on the dartboard. You know what category I put darts into? I put it into the same category as like the uh, like bare knuckle champion, boxing champions, where oh, yes. yeah, it's like oh yeah, I'm a sportsman, I'm a sportsman, blah blah blah. But then when you put them in against a boxer, they get their asses whipped, and it's <laughs> like, see, you're not a sportsman. Yes, that's very true. Now, I'm just having a quick look on Periscope here, and it says that we have super fans. Oh, really? Who are our super fans? Number one is Jill Sanderson. Okay. Uh, number two is Nadine. Oh, nice. Number three is Brad Everly. Oh, nice. Number four, Richard Cranium, and number five is James Manwaring. Okay, cool. Wow, I wonder what you do to become a super fan. No idea. But... Uh, mm. Thanks to the super fans. Yeah. Uh, it says here that there's two watching at the moment, and I'm assuming I might be one of them. Oh, now it only says <laughs> one. Now it only says one, so, you know, we're, oh, playing, we're playing to an audience of ourselves. One is the loneliest number. So there you go. 
tune in, people. Well, Send us in some comments and stuff, and you know, say good day. I, I in this, you know, this podcast. What I want to do is just stick to rugby league as much as possible. That's my goal. Tonight. Yeah. Yeah, I went off the rails a bit in that last one we did. Yeah, it was. It, I don't want to say loose because <laughs> we seem to say it an awful lot. Yeah, it's be, be, it was be, beyond that. I feel like. Yeah, I think it would go beyond loose. I think it was just sloppy. Yeah, see, and, there was and sloppy, not in a way where it was unprofessional. No, but just in a way that was kind of looser than loose. It was more of a liquid state. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, like, it's, uh, there were points there where I feel as though I stepped over lines and th- they couldn't be broadcast. <laughs> yeah, we, we had to, uh, we had to remove the episode to ensure the uh, continued employment of one of the people involved with the show. <laughs> Boogie Bumper is saying, read the comments, you ass hat. So we apparently we have comments. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> See I'm gonna say that that's the nicest word I've ever been called, by the way, is ass hat. Because ass-hat. most of the words I get called are four letters. Okay. And never two syllables. So nice. I'm I find that as uh He's just giving me massive praise. I'm happy with that. So thanks for that. See, I wish there was a way I could see, because for people that don't know, I'm watching a screen on my laptop is basically the game that we're going to be watching. But I don't really have a second screen with me that I can... Let's see, use my... um, All right, hang on. Let let me do it. I'll just... I'll do some stuff here. Because I've I've got 37 monitors, so I'll, I'll get on with this. Okay. I would love to have... Do you know what? There's a thing you can do where you can set up a second monitor with an iPad on on the Mac. But unfortunately, my iPad is just too old for it. Oh, that's a bit of a shame. Yeah. Um, Which means I need a new, I need a new iPad, bro. Well, you just need another one. Just go, go get yourself a monitor. Yeah. And then that, what? That's all you got to do. Just get, a, get yourself a monitor, hook it up, and you have two monitors. Your laptop and that one. See, I wonder if I could set it up so that I'm sure there's some, I'm sure there's something I could do with in terms of like just plugging my TV into this sucker and using that as a monitor or something. Yes. Okay. I'm currently attempting to log in. Something went wrong, and it's not your fault. Do you have to log in? Yeah, I think if I want to see the comments, I have to log in. Do I have to log in? I don't know. No, let me have a look. Let me see on this. It's all been a pest. Trying to connect. You will. Um, there's three people watching us, apparently. Yep. Now, uh, Boogie Bump will never have to... Uh, he'll never be able to achieve this level of professionalism <laughs> on any of these podcasts. Now there's four people watching us. Now there's back to three. Yeah, I can't see any comments just yet. I actually... So, I'd like to hear them do an episode of um, of the starting block where yeah. they just mention occasionally how many people they've got following them in the in the live feed. Ah, see, we've got some comments now. It's that Boogie Bumper saying he's fourth in his work NRL tipping comp and he hasn't watched a game all year. That's pretty impressive. I only just realised tonight that the Dragons are shit and Knights aren't winning. <laughs> That's, well, you're ahead of their coaches. <laughs> that's, that is true. Oh, shit. Uh, also, haven't tipped the Raiders all year. Find out tonight they are third. <laughs> that's hilarious. There we go. It's a bit like that. It's a funny season. I think this has been a real weird season, hey? Well, I think, I think in the sense that there was a lot of people who thought that... Um, yeah, mainly we're going to do as well as I have. Mm-hmm. Canberra was a bit of an unknown entity. Um, for some reason, a lot of people thought that Newcastle would be in the top top six. <laughs> yeah, I, I never got that. I no. didn't understand that. I eh? and and I'm definitely on the record for saying that I knew I knew from the get go that was not going to happen. Yeah. 
sorry that was kind of very very amusing why is this not coming up what is it no, I'm trying to trying to find our channel on Periscope it's not coming up at all there go freak pod yeah it doesn't come up in the search okay some search some search system that is Oh, okay. I shouldn't have to t- type anything. It should just appear as one of the top feeds. It's just right on the start there. Big hello to Andy Jewett that just joined us. G'day, Andy. Give some comments if you'd like. Tell us who you think is going to win the Challenge Cup final in 2019. Yeah, St. Helens. Yeah, I think Saints will win. I think they'll absolutely smash Warrington High. Yeah, it's. I, I'm not even seeing how this is going to be close. Well, the thing is that, like, I oh, hang on. There's another comment for it, but we said I just assumed Storm Roosters and maybe the Broncos are top four. I think the Broncos assume that too wrongly. Yeah, um, Broncos. Broncos are way off the mark. God, they look. They for the most part of this year, they look like a bunch of fucking idiots. To be honest. You know who they could use is Anthony Griffin as a coach. Yeah. Just like Penrith could. Yeah, Penrith could use him as well. Uh, that'd be fantastic for both clubs. I, I actually thought of something tonight, all right? Just say you're the Warriors and you're getting rid of um, Stephen Kearney. Yeah. And the Warriors have new owners, right? It's the Auckland Rugby League, I believe. And they look at the club and they say, listen, the only coach that we've ever been good under is Ivan Cleary, but he's locked up at Penrith. But we'd, we'd love to give him a massive, massive contract to come back. And they go to Penrith and they say, listen, we know he's under contract, but we'll buy him off you. Do, do Penrith at least have a meeting over that? No, because the reason why they wanted him was to, to lock up Nathan. Well, that's the thing. Like, it... it his, I don't he, think they'd say yes. Either, he, here's but, a question I'd pose to you, though. If they came yeah. in and said, we will pay out every single cent of Ivan Cleary's contract, mm-hmm. as well as you let us take Nathan, and we will pay out all of his contract as well, mm-hmm. would they do it? Penrith? Mm. I don't think so, no. Do you reckon they'd think about it? I don't think so. I think that Nathan... Is a really handy young player no. to have on board. No, I, I know that. I'm just saying, if if you had both of those, if you had those two paid out, knowing yeah. also that you freed up close to about a million again with Maloney leaving, you're going to have close to two million dollars in in the cap, with no ties anywhere, free to use, just by any half you want, or any halves partners you want. Jeez. Yeah. You know. You know what. I, I don't have a board meeting, but I sit down with whoever the hell runs the club properly and I say, listen, this is the offer on board. I can save us, like, say, two million bucks right now, get us a new coach in, which I feel like they need, and, but we lose Cleary. But we got all this money to spend, and I don't know a dude in Newcastle that probably would take a really good offer right now. Yeah. Even if you gave him 1.5, you've still got 500k. You can give to probably even a junior. Exactly. And it's not like they haven't got good halves, junior halves. No. Like, like they've got some good... A lot of 5.8s, though. I don't know that they've got a good halfback, proper pure halfback. And look, I rate Cleary, Nathan Cleary really highly. But, yeah, man, it's a good question. If it's a way to... It, it's a business decision. Yeah. Because you're looking at it going two million bucks, and mm. you've you've only got to buy two players with it. Yeah. And even if you spend one point five on Ponga, that's still five hundred grand left over. But then, who do you sign a as a coach? Who do you sign? Well, that's a good thing with coaches is it's it's not in the cap, but um, I they need they need a coach who knows how to score points. And well, so, you had one. See, I think what they need is a coach that'll tell them to hold the fucking ball. And when they say, oh, but we want to play this free-flowing style of game, they say, nah, nah. 
Hashtag bring back Royce Simmons is what Boogie's saying. I'm up for that. Royce. Remember when he was on Twitter? Oh, mate. Funniest Twitter account ever. He was hilarious. That was stunning, that was. That was, that was the highlight of Twitter. It was Royce it Simmons really on was. Twitter. An outstanding tweeter. Oh, yeah. But people actually believed it was actually Royce. There's actually news articles in the St. Helens, whatever it is, newspaper, where... They the had, Star? I think it's The Star. Yeah. They had a journal actually go and ask Roy Sims himself if it was actually him on there. And he gave a wry smile, apparently, and said, nah, it's not me. But because he did it in such a cheeky manner, people were going, fuck, we're still not certain. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, love that. Yeah, maybe Royce could come back. Maybe get I Gus back should. to coach. Well, here's the thing, right? Just say you are the St. George Dragons. <coughs> and you go to you go to Gus and you say, Gus, we need your help, man. We want we need a coach. Would Gus take over the coaching role? And remember, think... it's his boyhood club. I, I don't think he would. Really? I don't think he would. Because I've always had a, a, somewhat of a criticism of Gus, and I might be wrong in this, hmm. but I've always believed that he liked to go to clubs that were either already close to their peak or their peak was about two or three years away but they were building upwards and things were getting better Mm -hmm. I don't recall him going to a club going downhill that's a good point Uh, that's that's not and that's not a criticism of it I mean if you're going to be a good coach you've got to be able to pick the pick the right club as well but yeah you look at him when he was when he was at the Bulldogs I mean they had a damn good squad and then he moved to Penrith when they were on the cusp of being regular finals contenders and then he switched over to the Roosters at just the same time as they were starting to build up again. Thanks, Lazo to Fittler. Do you want to bring on Boogie Bumper? If you can. We can bring him on, yeah. Let's, uh, I'm trying to get to his thing here. Go there, go there. We need um, someone on this damn show who knows what they're doing. Yeah, I'm trying to think of, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of what fucking. Uh, Actually, how is he not in a podcast of his own at the moment? I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to work out. Uh, I'll, I'll ask him to send us your We've, Skype. We have found the slimmest window to speak to Boogie Bumper that is humanly possible. Yeah. That's, Let's that's, see how that's this in, works. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll try not to make this like the last Challenge Cup one we did. Oh, where you, where 20, you disappeared. Yeah, for 20 minutes, I was just like, hang, hang on, I'm just sorting this out. Hang on, hang on, hang on, I'm sorting this out. <laughs> yeah, just, just don't hang up like you did the last time and then have to... I think you even did it the other day with um, when we had the CEO on. No, you know what happened? It just... I had a... My internet dropped out. Ah, because I just knew yeah. you disappeared. And I had, yeah. to keep, I had to keep talking like a nervous person, hoping no one would pick up on the fact that you were there. <laughs> Yeah, I I, uh, I know how to mess things up pretty well. Yeah, and I don't know how to cover for it. it makes a fantastic, fantastic experience for everyone. Any time I drop out, you should just go ballistic at me. Say, he's, he's ruining the show. Where's that work like this? <laughs> Where's just that go off your head. Now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a professional here. I can't be doing this shit anymore. <laughs> he's always doing this. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, I take uh, I take it the fact he didn't get an automatic response means he's just got in to do another podcast of his own. I don't know. He might have. I'm I'm waiting for him to send me his. Uh, maybe he's looking for his Skype name. He's a very uh, secretive sort of person. Oh yeah, he is too. Yeah, I forgot about that. But we'd see his Skype name anyway when it. You know, when he joins the conversation. Well, that's true. Uh, let's see here. I'm still trying to get onto Periscope somewhere. I had the website up north, so it was loading. So what time is it now? So we're 15 minutes away from the start of the, uh, I believe it's the Coral Challenge Cup. There's a, there's a spattering of crowd there. 15 minutes to go. It's not a great crowd yet, but... 
I'm sure it will come up. Let's be honest, right now, the number of people in there is probably less than half full. Oh, definitely. I'd say, say it holds, I'm pretty sure Wembley holds 90,000. Um, what would that be there? It's got to be less than, that's less than, I reckon that's like 15. Oh, yeah, okay, look, I was going to say about 17 to 20. Did you go to Wembley when you were over there? No, God, I was a little close. Yeah. Went past it on the train. I wonder what, I mean, it looks like a, a good, a genuinely good footy ground to watch a game at. Um, Although the only problem it's got, and it's always had it, is those shallow in goals. Yeah, I mean, they're terrible. They're yeah. absolutely terrible. I'd almost, I'd almost allow them to bring the goalposts and the, the goal line forward. Yeah at both ends by two metres just to make it normal in the end goal. <laughs> something's got to be done. Obviously, they can't make the stadium bigger, but something's got to be done. Those end goals, so you can see me, they are so shallow. They really are. Like, it, it's crazy. Um, okay, so I think I've added Boogie. Um, okay, let me see if I can add him <laughs> to that. To All the right. conversation. Let's see how we go. Remember, you might have to uh, fix his um, what's it called? His levels. Oh, okay, I'll just keep an eye on this over here to see if um, you drop out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, come on. And if, he's, and if his levels are crap, then he can tell us how it works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, that's hilarious. Yeah, this is another one where I can't fucking see him on here. Let's see. I wonder if I can just call him, huh? Actually, I've got a better idea. Hang on. Scott doesn't make it easy, do they? Doll pad. Okay. Let's add his number. Okay, let's let's read it out. <laughs> no, that's not how you do it. Um, <laughs> um Okay, there we go. This has been coming for a while. Some sort of cross, What's that? some sort of cross pollination between the starting block and us. I reckon. It's been long overdue. Oh. I'm literally putting in a number. Hey, I hope this works. That's okay. While you're doing that, I just dropped my guts, so, you know. This better not be a sex line that he sent me to. Okay, <laughs> let's see. I wouldn't, let's be, dis- I wouldn't like... be dis I wouldn't be disappointed if it was. Actually, you know, just sit back, take the pants off. Let's see. <laughs> So I'd have to put them on first and take them off again. What the hell is this? What are you doing? I can see a phone number there. Yeah, it's yeah, it says that it wants me to fucking. This, this is this is fucking. Okay, I'm going to give you his his Skype name. You try and add him. I can't. Pull, it never works for me. No, no, I don't know what you're doing wrong. There we go. I've sent it to you in the DM. Okay. Let me go over there and find that. Am I in the wrong account? Oh, I'm in the wrong account. Okay. Okay, so we've got um, no chin coming out. He's uh, he's got. You just sent me his name. Is that all it is? Oh, Jesus, Andrew. I'm trying to do this covertly, and you're just like, oh, his fucking name. <laughs> I didn't reveal anything. I didn't say which name. Yeah. It's his real name. I didn't say Frank Johnson. Frank. Whoops. You knew his name was Frank. Yeah. Alrighty, let me have a look here. Uh, what have you done? Apparently, I've done nothing. <laughs> yeah, see if you can get it to work. I put I put that number in, but it wanted me to pay money. I found someone with that name. Yeah, just Adam. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Calling. Okay. See how this works. I think he's joined. Hello there. Oh, jeez. How are you going? This Pretty is, good. This is fantastic. Boys. We were just discussing um, 
Freaky's complete inability to add people to Skype because he does this every fucking time. Every <laughs> fucking time. Well, Skype Skype is very complicated. Uh, I it's know. It's a very, very advanced technology we're dealing with here. So, um, you know, you'd have to put the number and the name into the thing and then the it person happens every on the time. other side. Yeah. <laughs> I, lo- I love what you guys do. Can I just say, I know that... Um, so. Fergo, you're the guy who's the stat guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. And the league freak, I'm pretty sure you're from Mount Druitt. Is that fair? Yes, that is fair. Uh, is, I, I can tell because I grew up here. So I know that accent when I hear it. I, yeah. I know the way you talk. And I know a Mount Druitt footy fan when I hear one, especially when they're talking about Penrith. Let me tell you something. The glory days of Penrith, like in the early 90s, do you remember yeah. that shit? Yeah, do I do. Do you remember that stuff? Yeah. See... What made Penrith so good was the fact that they embraced the Westiness. They embraced the fact that they weren't professional. Do you know what I mean? Like everybody in everybody in Mount Druitt, Penrith, Erskine Park, St. Clair, like all of these areas, Jamison Town, right? They all knew that the Penrith players and the Penrith coaching staff were like on the piss every weekend. They were yobbos. Like everyone embraced it. You know what I mean? Players came from other states and played for Penrith and then embrace the fact that they weren't as professional as all the other guys. Where do you think Brad Fittler got his, like, 20 schooners a day habit from? It was from Penrith. You know but what I mean? the thing is, that's, that's now gone... That culture is now Newcastle culture. <laughs> it's always been Newcastle. But, but they just couldn't yeah. win comps. That's the difference. <laughs> yeah, the thing, yeah. The thing, that, that, the thing that's, that's a... fascinating about this, though, is I find it was pretty much just a rehash of or much, much better, though, of what Roy Masters did at West in the seventies, because mm. Roy Masters, yeah, like, so, yeah. he, he just yeah, brought it in and just made it against Manly. Yeah, and he just made it against Manly. All oh, those rich bastards in Manly. The Peters just came and said, "No, no, no, we're not just going to bitch about the rich people. We're going to embrace every single fucking iota about Penrith in this team." And yeah. they did it, and they won, and they went away from that. Why go away from that? It works. Well, the, people talk about culture in a football team. And people say, oh, there's a toxic culture and stuff. But the best cultures are ones that the local press turns a blind eye to. You know what I mean? So well, for the longest time. What they should be doing, <laughs> too, a... is get the local press involved in that culture. <laughs> That's why Brisbane was so good for so long. Absolutely. I'm a Broncos fan. I grew up a Broncos fan. Yeah. So they, it's a, it's a long-running joke in Brisbane. I, can I tell you a real story, a true story? I went to a jazz club in allegedly, Brisbane like allegedly. 10 years ago. Yes. Allegedly, I went to a, a jazz club in Brisbane like ten years ago, and I was wearing a Bronco shirt. And I'm a pretty tall guy; I'm a big guy. And I walked yeah. in there, and we got ushered to like a really good table right up the front and stuff. And I'm like, well, I guess this is just a fluke. I was just wearing like a, a polo shirt, a Broncos polo shirt. I'm in Brisbane. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, supporting the team, you know. And um, like I went up to the bar like an hour later, and one of the barmen said, "So like." Are you in reserves or something? And I just looked at him funny. And I'm like, what? No, this is 100% true story. I'm like, what? And he's like, so you play for the team, right? And I'm like, no. I'm just Man. a guy from Sydney. You so should That's have said yes. <laughs> so Say, yes, I, I do play reserve great, and I'm here for the bitches. Where are they? They run that town, man. They run that town. <laughs> you know why you got put a table up the front, though, there? Because you actually had a shirt on. <laughs> they saw you in a polo shirt and they're like, oh, look at this fancy fucker. Yeah, look at this, yeah. look at this rich bloke wandering in all shirted on yeah. and everything. They Fucking noticed pop. my class when I was reverse parking my horse <laughs> out the front. <laughs> well, look, he's got a horse. Not riding in on one what? of those weird donkey things. Fucking no. Yeah, before you were talking about Anthony Griffin, for me, I like Griffin. I reckon he's a good coach, but I think he's like, He's like he's he, he's too good for reserve grade, but he doesn't get results at the top level. Like I reckon he's a good coach. Like if you saw the stuff he did in uh, Queensland rugby league back in the day, like he was an he, he came from nothing and he he um like he's really well regarded in Queensland rugby league, but for some reason when he gets to the top level, he just doesn't get the results. It so doesn't he, work. It doesn't it doesn't go. It's like a really good um, reserve grade footballer who gets like one or two games a year but when they go back they dominate but when they come into first grade they just can't get the results you know what I mean so it's like the... easy, mate. <laughs> I was going to say Tony Williams <laughs> <laughs> he's the Tony Williams of coaching 
Yeah. The Tony Williams of coaching. Well, this, he's not as bad as Stephen Kearney. Come on. No, he's that's better Steve, than Stephen Kearney. Yeah, yeah. The, the, yes. I don't even know if Stephen Kearney would get a Super League coaching gig. I think he's cheap. I reckon. Level. I reckon Griffin's the guy. Griffin's the guy you hire when you when you have a team that's running last for two years and you want him to get like mid table. You know okay. what I mean? So he's like an advanced version of Garth Brennan. <laughs> I don't even know who Garth Brennan is. <laughs> he, he was a bloke that tied and sacked. He's a Titans player, so I have no idea who he was. <laughs> are there are there are there any real actual Titans fans? I've never met one. Um, I, I think they sack them every year. <laughs> the fans. <laughs> I know they used to have fans, but then there was some dodgy shit going on at the club, and the fans were like, "Fuck this stuff! I'm going to the beach." See, think... the problem is when you when you have a team on the Gold Coast, your fans are only there for a holiday, and then they go back to Japan. So it like it never lasts. <laughs> they buy right. merchandise and then go home. <laughs> I tell you the funny thing, though. One of the things that people say is like, "Oh, you know the the Gold Coast Titans." They're, they're not playing well, and you've, you've got to remember that they're competing with the beach, like Cronulla and Manly <laughs> and St. George <laughs> and Woolcock. It's like, what the fuck, man? You know, everywhere's a beach. We live on yeah. the coast, for fuck's sakes. This is Australia, yeah. Like, so the Roosters play at Bondi, but you're worried yeah. about the Gold Coast. Are, are you serious, man? Are you serious, bro? Yeah, I think, I think the main thing people need to know about the Gold Coast is when it comes to sport, the place is a fucking graveyard. Mm. Doesn't matter yep. what sports played there, it dies in the ass hard. Apart from well, strip, like... strip club uh, ping pong, that's pretty fucking good in the Goldie. <laughs> See, that's does the place. Is the basketball that... team still there though? The basketball team does quite well, don't they? Because it's only like five thousand stadium, so they like fill it out every week. And there's probably only, tickets. There's probably, only, there's probably only four teams in the NBL, so it wouldn't be hard to do good. <laughs> <laughs> I've no idea. I've not watched the NBA for years. There's not there's not that many teams. Like I think it's an eight team comp or something. I'm pretty sure. Mm. See, a long that... way from the heyday of basketball in Australia. Yeah, yeah. Back when Isaac Burton was tearing it up before he Isaac went to jail. Isaac Burton, Phil oh, Smythe, there's a reference. Phil Smythe, Leroy Loggins. Phil Smythe. He ended up being the coast, uh, the coach of the Adelaide, didn't he? The baldy guy. Is yeah. that him? Yeah, I think Phil I Smythe. Him. The least I remember the Canberra Cannons. I, I used to love Simon Dwight from the Cam, uh, Canberra Cannons. They were only a team for like five years. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone dies in the in, in the uh, NBL. Yeah, it yeah. is a great. Why is the Prince there? Prince doesn't care about rugby oh, league. Look, no, he's, he's, he's actually oh, the cool. ambassador for rugby league in England. You're uh, joking. He's no. never played a game in his life. Nope. He's probably sits there and watches rugby union, but he's the ambassador for no, rugby league. Oh, well, it's, 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 it's fine Wayne. to meet the players, but when where do the horses come out of? <laughs> when do they mount their horses? This is polo, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Where's the foxes? Yeah. Where are the foxes? I'm mounting my fox later tonight, around 11pm. <laughs> <laughs> With, without the aid of the help. <laughs> no, they wipe him off so afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Release the hounds. Release um, the hounds. When... Yeah, when the when when the prince and his missus came over to Australia last year, they went to the NRL museum and were greeted, were greeted by Todd Greenberg, who proceeded to tell them absolutely nothing about the history of the game because he knows nothing about the history of the game. <laughs> <laughs> so back in the day, there was a rape scandal at the Bulldogs. <laughs> You'd be pleased to know, your your highness. <laughs> yeah, it's uh. So we've got links to the royal family there. Oh, that's good. It's funny, you know he how looks they very say, comfortable, doesn't he? Look do at this the footage. Stuff. They do the etiquette stuff, and they say, listen, you don't say this to Prince and that. Do you reckon they why, is Barnaby the Joyce, why is Barnaby Joyce introducing <laughs> the teams? <laughs> <laughs> There's the you former, see that? Look at that. I did, yes. There's a former Dragons coach there, by the way. Dead set. Which one? Steve the Price. No gin. Just on the end there. Wow, Steve Price. It is, too. Yeah. Good pickup. Look at that. He was a tremendous player, wasn't he? Front rower? Yeah. Was he a front rower? No, I think he was a second rower. Different, different second Steve rower. Price. Yeah, you're thinking the other Steve Price. Ah, the one that actually had ah, a first grade career. And it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, half these players don't even know who the hell they're looking at. How many of them are Australian, though? Um, about uh, Out of the 17 playing for Leeds, I think 14. I don't know. I'm making <laughs> shit up here. 
I wouldn't be surprised though. Did you know Craig Wing is still playing rugby in Japan? No. No. Yeah, not. man. Yeah, and he's like a hero there. They love him. Oh, he's probably making like three times as much that he did in the NRL. And he's like, oh, what is he, like 39 now, 40 years old? He's still he's playing. He's looking motherfucker here. Wow. That, that was Barnaby Joyce there again. Barnaby. <laughs> he, he likes getting involved he's looking, in sexual affairs. He does. He's looking He's looking for his next host. <laughs> <laughs> his next mistress. Yeah. <laughs> I, I once heard that 100 women were asked, would you ever sleep with Shane Warne? And uh, 92 of them said, never again. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. This is just a handshaking service. Maybe this is what... Remember we were talking about rugby league one day, it would just be a coin flip. Maybe this is just the evolution of rugby league, where it's just they all shake hands and then they leave the field. I think I think what he should be doing here, to cut down on time and make this a better spectacle, is just do one of those things like pro wrestlers do, where they just run along and just put their hand out and slap everyone's <laughs> hand as they run past. <laughs> he just put his hand in the air and just wave and say, Hooroo, I'm out. What would he say? All right, ladies though? and gentlemen, let me introduce to you the Prince! Yo! And play some techno music while he's running past them. Yeah. He's the prince. He's having sex with Megan Fox. He's everywhere, baby. No, he's not Megan Fox. What's the, what's the name of his uh, bride? Mark, Mark, Mark. Megan? Megan Markle. I was yeah. close. It's a Megan. Yeah. 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 And an actress. Yeah. Well, used to be. That not many people used know to be. Now, <laughs> now she only acts as a princess. <laughs> <laughs> Chicken channel. That's classic. He needs a shave. He needs to shave the prince. Look at him. Oh, he's compensating for the loss up top. Yippee. So is this like the grand final in the UK, is it? No, uh, this but... is like a knockout competition and this is the final. <sighs> yeah, like the some... FA Cup. Yeah. Yeah, but for some reason this is um, probably seen as being as, I'd say, rivals the grand final over there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, don't they treat their league competitions as like, and I, I tend to have some sympathy with this. I don't know about you guys, but I tend to think like, you know, like the Premier League. If you, it's it's every team plays everyone uh, twice, once home, once away, and at the end of the season, that's the ladder. And if you're on top of the league at the end of the season, like I know we do it different. We have finals and stuff. We're more American in that sense. Mm-hmm. Like we have pro, uh, postseason, you know. Mm-hmm. But I really like the fact like whoever finishes on top of the league at the end of the year, as long as it's everyone plays everyone like twice home and away, then that's the best team as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it, the finals is like a different comp, you know, like so everyone's playing for a place in the different comp. But the premiership is like the home and away season as far as I'm concerned. Well, the, I'm a bit the system, old school. The system that England had up until this year, which I had briefly, was everyone played each other twice. And then they played an extra round where they played another team a third time. That was Magic Weekend. And yep. then the top eight Is teams... that where they split the league in half? Like, so the top half of the league no, no. each other and the bottom that, half? That's the next oh, bit. Okay. So after that, they then had Super Rates oh. where they played the other teams in the top eight another time. And then they had the final four in the finals. So you could actually... Some teams could actually play another team five times in the premiership season. Wow. And... If they were two good sides, there's a fair chance they would have met met also in the Challenge Cup. So it could have been you play one team six times in one year. Yeah, right. Stupid. But anyway, Lachlan <laughs> Coote. I remember he was he was playing for Penrith. He's, yeah, he's, he's the he world's best good. player over there now. Yeah. Is he really? <laughs> he's Kevin a Kevin Nagama. I remember him. Yeah, can't tackle. Uh, Lomax is a famous name, but I don't think he's any relation. None at all. Uh, Thompson, Tom, Luke Thompson played here, didn't he? No, or is he? No, 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 different Thompson. Alex Look at Walmsley's yeah. mass mustache. Did you yeah. see that? Yeah, yeah. There's the he came out on a penny lady. farthing. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, all. I do say, don't don't chase me around the field too vigorously, or I'll set my hounds on you. <laughs> <laughs> ding ding. <laughs> St. Helens. It was always St. Helens versus Wigan when I was growing up, and Wigan was always the best team. Yeah, yeah look at Ratchford. That, that's a, a face for radio. <laughs> His nose has been broken how many times? Just more, once. Really more, well. <laughs> it, it's more out of whack than Cooper Cronk's nose. And that, that's hard work. 
That is. <laughs> He's got like three four. right angles in it. <laughs> Chris Hill, I remember. Did he play here? No. Dragons he's... player, no. maybe? No? Different no. guy. <laughs> he's played for England, though. Okay. Jason Clark was at South last year. After a while, he's been doing massive hits over there. He's, he's, he used to play for Philbin the needs Tots. a haircut. Yeah. And there's Jacob Mamo, who was a fullback for the Knights briefly during their um, Wizards. Was he really? Years. Yeah. There you go. And, he's, and now he's playing in Challenge Cup finals. Yeah, he's a star. Hasn't now. he stepped up? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a shame here we, we don't get to see the referees with the uh, the head cam, which looks like they've just put a jock strap on their head and tied a camera to it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be nice one year for the English champions to come out here for, you know, when uh, the grand final winners here play the English team. We always have to play in our off season in England. Wouldn't it be nice if they came out here one year? Like oh. in the middle of the fucking summer, it's oh. like thirty-five degrees, <laughs> just like eighty nil. It's like, all right, <laughs> that evens it up for the previous three decades. Welcome, go home, England. Thanks for coming. Freaky has Thanks a great coming. story that um, he went to a lot of effort for on a minor detail, which I just love about a time that England came oh, out yeah, here yeah. and played against Burley. Burley, tell us about that story, Freaky. <laughs> Yeah, so Great Britain comes out and they've got a, they're going to do a warm up before a Tri Nations game, and they play against the Burley Bears, and but it's really really hot in Burley, so they decide yep. they need to play in quarters and stuff. They only just yeah. won the game, right? They, they won it. What was the score? It was like something like twelve eight or something. Yeah, I think it was sixteen twelve something. Like that. It was pretty close. Yeah, defensive like game. <laughs> anyway, we I rang up the the Bureau of Meteorology to find out the, <laughs> the temperature on that day. And it was 23.4 degrees. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they needed quarters. They needed oh, a mate, it's too hot. It's too hot here. You know what I mean? It's like the fucking sun. It don't stop. I'm just been uh, sitting here with the sun. Oh, sorry. Am I, am I allowed to swear on this podcast? I'm fucking okay. Yeah. Yes, you okay. are. So, mate, it's the fucking sun. Don't blame me, coach. Don't blame me, cobber. It's not my fault. It was like fucking 50 degrees out there. You see these burly bears running around. They do this all fucking year, mate. I need to have, I play 20 minutes and have a drink of water. You know what I mean? It's like fucking $200,000 a year. You're not paying me to sweat. You know what I'm saying? So I'm out here to play footer, and these cunts are out here running around, and they're fucking 40-degree heat. It's bullshit, mate. Fucking bullshit. It was 23 degrees. Yeah, but that's what they say on the TV, isn't it? That's what they say on the TV, isn't it? I, I tell you, it felt like 40 degrees out there when I was out there. <laughs> felt like 40. It was a hot day. It was a wonderful moment in British Rugby League history, that. <laughs> well, they've got to have, there's a first time for everything. So. I just want to stress, too, that the um, that game was played in, what, 2003 or something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it was a two th- yeah, 2003. Oh, some, on, no, like, I, think, I think it was four. I think it was 2000. Oh, yeah. Four. yeah. yeah. The, like the, the thing I love about the story is that um, the bit where Freaky said that he rang up the Bureau of Meteorology, that's something he did this year. He rang them up this year yeah. for that little aspect, and they gave him the actual weather the actual on the for, da- on for that, that day. day. Yeah, wow! And, and it was straight I didn't away. Know they I had a call line. Yeah, it's probably like the least. It's the, the least trafficked call center on earth. You know, <laughs> the Australian Bureau, Bureau of Meteorology. Hello. <laughs> there was just one person there that'd been sitting there for thirty-five years waiting for a phone call, and the first one doing her in, nails, and it's, it's freaking calls up. He's like, what? What do I press? How do I answer this thing? Nah, it's like that scene out of Seven where the phone starts ringing in the apartment and they're like, phone, phone, they start going after the line. It was like that. Hello? Like, hey, I want to know what the temperature was on. This day. Can I put you through to my supervisor? Sir, we've got, actually, we've got a call. Can you believe <laughs> Somebody actually called this phone number. Who are you? What department? Where? Calls? <laughs> Do we take calls? I need to speak to the to the Prime Minister. Do we take calls? Mr. Morrison, we've got a serious call. Somebody called the Bureau of Meteorology. <laughs> I want to know the Let's weather go to of the situation the... room. <laughs> we need to talk about this. Um, oh, just so, just in case anyone's listening, um, the Challenge Cup final has started. It's been going on for three minutes now, and nothing's happened. Oh, hang on. Uh, nothing happened there. The world's no, greatest no. player, Thomas Mackinson, has taken a catch gets there. the ball. He won the Golden Boot last so year. Is this, a, is this a live commentary podcast? Is it? 
It's just... No, we sort of just talk over the top of the game, and if something happens, oh, we say, oh, shit, yeah. this is going on. And... We, we occasionally exactly. mention something going on in the game, but at the moment, there's not much there. I mean, Naguama's got the ball. He doesn't have his mangy, his mangy hair. He got tackled, as usual. Yeah, so. yeah, he doesn't do much. As, as a West Tigers fan, I, I had to suffer through Naguama for plenty of years. Ah, you're a Tigers fan? So were you the West or the Tigers? Uh, Balmain side. Ah, right. Yeah, so My I, old I, man was a Balmain fan, but back in the day, like in the 60s, when it was like really blue collar and like Dockers and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, before and, they sold out to the cafes. Oh, absolutely. I asked him, like, when I was growing up, when I was like 10 years old, because I grew up a Broncos fan, right? And I'm like, who do you go for? And he's like, uh, I don't watch footy. I'm like, what do you mean? And he said, nah, I don't give a fuck. I don't like it. And I'm like, well, who did you go for when you were a kid? And he goes, oh, Balmain. And I said, so why don't you follow it anymore? And he goes, because they're all pussies now. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> By the way, hello to NRL Physio who just joined us in the chat. Nice. Um, yeah. Just to say, when when you had that conversation with, you, with your dad about Balmain and they're all being pussies now, what the... Was that around the early 90s when he made that comment? Yes, yes. So that was when they were being coached by Alan Jones. They oh, were, was it Alan Jones? Mm, they were really? dark Yeah, days. Alan Jones coached them. Ba- ba- Didn't they get to a grand final back then, though? Oh, that was, that was, that was pre-Jones. Like that was pre-Jones. Ah, right. Yeah. Yeah, so, I think he was he was, he was was referring more to, like, the gentrification of the area. You know what I mean? You know, it turned into less blue-collar and more... Um, turn into like an inner city upper middle class kind of yeah um you know it's not the same as it used to be and that's evidenced by the fact that the balmain leagues club is no more where it used to be on vicky road right that's right and now it's gone so it's a hollow husk of what it used to be yeah it's nothing it's still nothing nobody wants it it's like a haunted house now nobody wants to set foot in a place (laughs) apparently some uh development mob uh looking at buying it in conjunction with west ashfield and, really? Yeah, and the plan is to just turn it back into a, a, a league squad again, but it'll be a West Tigers league squad. Um, well, that might work. Like, but well, that see, makes... I think West West Ashfield works though because you've got like you know so many. Well, this is going to sound rude, but it shouldn't. oh wow, well, um, that was got... a try. Is that, that a, is a try? try? Yeah, they didn't give that try though. That's that was a, try. a few minutes ago. That's oh, clearly shit. a try, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, see, I over... thought it was closer than that. They just went play on. Holy shit! Well, wow. see, that, that's the type of system that the people, that the media in Australia want is one where the referees make mistakes because they reckon they'll accept that. Mm. Well, I, I I hate video refing in all sports. To be yes, fair, because I I do reckon it's part of it's part of sport getting getting on the wrong end of the stick sometimes. Of course it is. Yeah. <clears throat> Fully the St George the St George Illawarra Dragons taught me that human failure is a massive part of sport. <laughs> So anyway, West West oh. Leagues Club, right in Ashfield. Yes, it works because like culturally in the area, there's um, a lot of people from a specific Asian persuasion, and they spend a lot of money, uh, a lot of money in the poker machines, right? So that's why that's why the, like that that club is such a powerhouse when it comes to revenue. So they've always been like the money side of the West Tigers. Um, oh, massively, yeah. You know, right? Yeah. So it would actually. It's funny, like, I know a lot of West fans, like Magpies fans from back in the day, and yes. they all rue the fact that the Tigers were like, it became the Tigers instead of the Magpies. Yeah, they still whinge about it. So you, if you go into Facebook groups, you'll see them, they don't care about the result of the game. They just care about the fact that the little Magpie logo on the collar is getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> right? Yeah. And it's like, what did you get? The socks? Yeah. Okay, good socks, bro. It's like, nice socks. It's like, I don't but care about the fucking result. I don't care about the fucking result. Where's the fucking magpie? They're, going, they're the West so Tigers. About the, Tigers, the Tigers were like the historical one that everybody cherished. They were like the Rabbitohs back in the day, you know, like the hard-working battler team. Nobody cared about the magpies. Yeah, that's because Bowman, and that's why. Bowman also won premierships fairly regularly. Exactly. Exactly, right? right? West one and the magpies. magpies the, yeah, the magpies. Were, they had moments where they were good, but they had a lot of moments where they were really bad as well. Yeah, yeah, bad. So the magpies won four premierships. I think Balmain had eleven or something like that, or fourteen or something. I don't. Know. But, Bowman, but it was like back in the thirties, wasn't it? Yeah, the magpies. Yeah, yeah. They went there. 
Oh, oh there's the world's best player oh. again. Take oh, look at that. Oh, look at him go. Oh, give him an See, NRL if you contract. Don't, if you don't win, if you don't win, you won't survive. Like, that's what happened to North Sydney. That's what happened to the Newtown Jets. Oh, North's right? a bit different. It, it rained it, in North. It rained in Gosford. Yeah, it rained. It was sad. <laughs> it was just sad. It they'll, rained. They were building a stadium. They were building a the stadium. They're like, oh, this is our big plan. Blue tuck. It rained. And then uh, they couldn't move in there. And they had to play out of all sorts of places. And then that was it. They were gone. Yeah. That was sad, though. It, it the North, Norths were a, a good team, like a good old rugby league team, you know. North Sydney Oval, in the sunlight. There was probably fewer places better if you were a rugby league fan back in the day. North Sydney Oval in the sun, you know. Oh, Especially if you were playing a game that mattered and you had to win because Norths always got the ass <laughs> when it mattered. Still, uh, <laughs> there were some great Norths players. Do you remember Gary Larson? He was oh, a yeah. guy. I loved him. In the he flow. was a jet. Oh, back in the day, 45 tackles a match. Like, book, book it in, you know? He was a workhorse. And Not a glory boy. Uh, Jason Taylor made his name at North Sydney, didn't he? Yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah. Then, yeah. then Jason Taylor went on to be a coach now, and no one likes him. Yeah, because he punches players in the face. No, no, they punch him in the face. They punch him. Oh, they punch him. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. He, he headbutts <laughs> their fist. <laughs> That's where we had. should be put. Do you see the picture uh, of him Robbie, after... Uh, after Far Logo, Robbie, I think it was, punched his, de- his face in during a mad Monday and he, his nose is all bent out of shape when for he was a fifth time. Right? South, yeah. I think it was. Oh, was that Para South? Oh, South okay. yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if someone from Para punched him as well. Because, you know, Para. Right? <laughs> um, was there the, the name of the fullback from North Sydney back in the day? Robbie something. Was it O'Driscoll? Is that his name? No. Does that ring a bell? <laughs> no. Nah. No. <laughs> Robbie Robbie Ross. Oh no, that was, was that a, his he, he was a Knights fullback. Knights, okay. And then after him came the guy who did the worm. But there was a really good um North Sydney fullback like in the early nineties. I can't remember. The ever since 90s. you guys have ever since I've been alerted to you guys, I've been trying to remember like when I used to watch uh footy. So I've been remembering names like Lee Odenrein. Do you remember? <laughs> That's a classic. That's a classic name. Lee. Who talks about Lee anymore? No Nobody. One, no one talks about Absolutely. Lee. Someone should. That that's a classic name. Mate. He he was known for being fast, he very beat, fast. He beat uh, Martin Offia in a match race at Parramatta Stadium. I Martin think it was Offia, Parramatta yeah, Stadium. but Offia or Ophia, as he's called in the British Isles, uh, he didn't get a good start. Remember, like he had to goose step the first ten meters <laughs> in that race. It was so disappointing. I mean, it was a it, really. It was supposed to be a coronation, and fucking Lee Odin Ryan <laughs> beats him. <laughs> On you, Lee. Uh, let's see if we can find us some some stats about Lee Odin Ryan. Why not? Wow, he had, he, he played from nineteen ninety two to two thousand and one. One hundred and thirty two games um, for a speedster. Injured a lot, eh? Yeah. 132 games, 49 tries. So he wasn't that wasn't a prolific try scorer for a bloke so fast. Back then, though, fullbacks, right? Fullbacks didn't score many tries. Then I think he was on the wing. So yeah, is no, he a winger? Yeah, yeah, no excuse. Yeah, he, <laughs> most of his games are on the wing. So maybe we just who his... what? Who did he play for? What were his clubs? Did he play for two or just one? No, he played for a few. He played. He started out of Parramatta. Uh, spent, spent four years at Parramatta. Then he spent one season at the old Gold Coast Seagulls. So there might have been the Chargers by then, actually. Oh. And then he went to he the... Did, he, he did a stewardship under Rowdy. Yes. <laughs> and then he spent four years at the Warriors. And then his last year was at the Cowboys. There you go. Cowboys, where careers go to die. Yeah. I mean, the Cowboys would have had quite a few dying careers in 2001 when he was there. Yeah, they, they were. Um, <laughs> they were. They collected at least half of the South Queensland crushes. So yeah, wow. Look at this. Two thousand and one. They had thirty eight players that played played at least one game that year, which is just crazy. Considering I think most yeah, teams you know, around twenty eight. There's to 30. so there's so many there's so many good players here, Fergo. That it's really hard to pick a squad every week. <laughs> well, there's They're one. For there's, a spot. there's one there you might remember. It's Julian O'Neill. Oh, I love Jules. Jules, back in the day, come on. 
Man. He was a sensational player when he was at his peak, but yeah. the um the drink got the better of him. Yeah, he was he peaked usually in casinos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> on on blackjack dealers. Yes. <laughs> Underneath tables. And he was and he was having regular sex with uh the swimmer. What was her name? Uh, uh Samantha Riley. Oh really? If you remember. Yeah, and then she ended up marrying uh the Norwegian speed skater. Which must have been a cruel blow to Julian. That would be because a conf- if I don't know. Oh I, man, I think, if, I think that would be a confused child if they have one. If if you get traded in for a guy who wears a condom for his sport, then you must be like, okay, I, I have to check out. I, I may turn gay at this point. <laughs> That's me done. <laughs> what the fuck am I missing? All of a sudden, he's talking about condoms. What the hell? <laughs> The Norwegian speed skater. I forget his name. Yeah. It was probably Yars or Lars or some, uh, you know, derivative of that. Yeah, they've but, got like five names in Norway. It's like yeah, Russia. Yeah, that's it. We're not stereotyping at all, but yeah. No. Oh, the Norwegians don't care. There's only like four million of them. What are they going to do? It's fine. I wonder what... Sorry what, to any um, Norwegian fans out there. <laughs> I wonder what the, what the daughter of, of Samantha and Lars... You know, given Lass, she, given that child's gonna have gonna have genes that are both speed skating and swimming, mm, that, that's gonna be it's a good confusing. genes. Yeah, but which way are you gonna go? Probably, probably end up being a transgender netball player. <laughs> like just, just just to keep everyone happy. <laughs> I was thinking they might just slide around on the ice rink on their tummy like a penguin. Yeah, I'm swimming. Yes, of course you are, darling. Of course Very you are. fast. Look at me. I'm the fastest. Ice, ice belly like skater there is. Maybe there'll be a world class curler. Well, now you're talking. Yeah. That's, maybe that's Are you good Julian. with a broom? That's a Julian. Exactly. You could imagine if that was a broom person, though. Just so disappointing. It's like, can you imagine you make the Olympics and they say, oh, what you do? Oh, curling? Oh, yeah, I've seen that. What's, what do you do there? Oh, yeah, I sweep, sweep. The, sweep the floor. <laughs> I swear, I'm really good at sweeping. I'm like ranked number four in the world in sweeping. Do you reckon they do much sweeping at home? I did my apprenticeship at Coles for 10 years <laughs> <laughs> in the produce section. You'd be surprised how many grapes get to the make their way to the floor. That's where I earn my craft. But the thing is, they only sweep really fast and really intensely on one really small area. Yeah. So you, they just, it's, get, it's a, you just get really small, shiny spots that are about the size of, say, you know, a $5 note. You know, wow, look how true. clean that part of the floor is. That's insane. Nah, what, Can you do the rest like that? Nah. The best sweepers are autistic because mm. they just they get the, you give them the sweeper and they're just really intensely sweeping one area of the floor. To be fair, to, uh, to be fair, to be fair, Rick Flair. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, Woo! To be fair, um, it's it's a repeated um, stroke, so they are probably sufferers of chronic masturbation. To be fair, maybe like I'm the missing guys my who s- the guys <laughs> who sweep the floor at the curling like that's all you need like you could come out as a really pale pasty uh 17 year old kid with long hair who's never seen sunlight in canada and just walk into the curling team you know what i mean i reckon you'd do that if you're an australian i think if you turn up to australia and you said i have skill holding a handle they'd say you're in done yeah didn't uh andy lee tried to make the australian curling team like 10 years ago do you remember that no i wouldn't be surprised though yeah, like they made a whole radio radio thing out of it. Uh, like he was training to make the Australian curling team. Did they use him as the broom? Like just turn him upside down and use his head? <laughs> it's got the I don't right... think Megan would have been Megan would have been happy with that. At the time. <laughs> that that would have worked. Um, Seventeen minutes into the game, and still nothing happened. Warrington's got a scrum ten meters out. They'll probably drop this somewhere. The Wolves. Is that where um, Alfie Langer played when he went to yeah, the UK? Yeah. I think... Did, uh, so he's, did Joey play for him as well? Really? Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah. yeah he played three or three, four games there, I think. The English Rugby League for a long time served one purpose for Australia, and that was to allow hothead players Retirement. to get out... No, nah, allowed hothead players to get out of suspensions in Australia. Is... So, uh, uh, what's his name? Monaghan still playing there? The dog whisperer? Joel. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think he is, yeah. No, oh. tr- no try, and that has got to hurt. Yeah, he's just got some rug burn. Yeah, it's worth noting that uh, here at Wembley, the in goal is about three and a half foot deep, and then it's just um, AstroTurf. Astro to the feet. 
that, that, like that really fine stuff you probably see um, around lawn bowling greens that you're allowed to walk on. Wow, it is really shallow, isn't it? In it goals. is. Wow. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Is that normal in in England or? Oh, no. that's that's actually that's a incredible fair runoff. <laughs> Normally, it's really water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's there's another ground they've got over there where the the sponsorship fence is very close to the dead ball line and the ground is actually elevated so when you get past the dead ball line it slopes downhill yeah. savagely into the fence. Do you remember do you know that one? Oh, that's old Trafford. Old Trafford. Yeah. That's yeah, big... where they play they play football there as well, right? Soccer. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, when you go off the you, if you slide through like that bloke did before, you just go downhill at a rapid rate and smash into the fence. At, nice. At top yeah, speed. I think uh, there was an Australian player that was injured. Uh, Hoffman, I think maybe Ryan Hoffman hurt himself um, in a very... test match from memory. He was quick too. Didn't he play rugby union as well? No. <laughs> is, that, is that not him? No. Hoffman, right? <coughs> sure, like blonde flowing lock guy? Is that the guy? No. Hoffman's got a busted no. nose. He's in the second row. Ah, uh, okay. Played for the Storm. Ah, oh, right. Well, yeah. that's why I don't know. Yeah, like that's, it. that's fair enough. Trust me, trust me. No one, I'm, in, no one in I'm Melbourne even knows your, I'm about. adding a lot to your rugby league podcast. Trust, trust me, trust me. You are, you really, really are. <laughs> We've already talked more rugby league in this episode than we did in the two and a half hours that we had to dump because we just went right off the rails. When was that? A couple of nights ago. Yeah, that was Why oh, did you dump it? Oh, all sorts of stuff. What were you talking about? Oh, that got uh, messy. Yeah, messy. Mm. I'm up late. I'm watching cricket, so. You want to get messy? Oh, look at the cricket. Cricket. I'll, I'll, that I'll is go... definitely a try. Look That's at that. A try, That's a try. Yeah. <laughs> I do have the cricket here on another TV in my room. England's two for fifty-eight. Oh, Chase. they're starting to make a little little comeback there. Yeah, they've got three hundred and one to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> three hundred and one to go. Joe Root scratching around like an old woman. He's like twenty-one not out of fifty-nine. Denley's nineteen of fifty-nine. Let's but see if I recognise Both of their best knocks in the summer, I think. Yeah. I think didn't Joe Root have two ducks in a row before this this innings? He did, yeah, he did. But there's Warner taking a regulation catch at first slip and carrying on like he just took the the best wicket of all time. It's funny though; that's his fifth catch at first slip for the game. Yeah. So the ball's looking for him, you know. He's actually got to the point now where he's serving a purpose as a fielder and not as a batsman, which is what he's fucking wrong <laughs> to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it would be amazing if we win this test, though, because oh, yeah. myself included, everyone was like, hey, we can't win without Steve Smith. Exactly. Like, Steve Smith is the heart and soul of this team. And if they win this game, imagine, like, I reckon if if the Aussies win this game, they will blow them off the park the next two games. You know what I mean? Like, they will just smash yeah. them because it's such a confidence boost. Yeah, and how shattered would it be for England mentally to have not even been able oh. to beat second-rate Australia without Steve Smith? They'll be destroyed, like mentally. They'll, they they won't even know how to even address the next game when Smith comes. When Smith comes out in the next game, they'll be like, "We're we're, we're fucked." Like we don't even know. Actually, I've I've got a question for you. How many Ashes series would it take England to um, get over this loss and actually start winning a series again? Well, uh, at least two. So they'll come out here and lose again. And then we might be able to win the next one over there just on the back of this loss. And then maybe they'll come out here with like a whole bunch of young players on tour and then, you know, build their confidence back up again. And then all of those young players wouldn't have faced all of the players that we'll have. And at that time, all of our players will be older and nearing retirement. So they won't have the fear factor, you know what I mean? So at yeah, least two. At least two. Well, given that they don't really perform in Australia too, or maybe three. Yeah, maybe three. Yeah, they don't perform in Australia too well. But I do remember, like, the series of 10-11 where we got absolutely smashed yeah. by uh, Alistair Cook and Ian Bell. and Those were dark days. I think Cook scored four or five hundreds in that series. They, they gave them all nightwoods after that one. <laughs> they did. Yes. They Sir did a parade through. Remember the parade they put on because they won yeah. the Ashes? <laughs> in <laughs> Australia. <laughs> Everyone's knighted. Yeah, in Australia, normally when we win the Ashes, we say, "All right, let's start the footy." Good job, boys. Yeah. <laughs> Haven't they? There's the charity shield. Put that on TV now. Haven't they got <laughs> a um, 
Isn't there a darts player over there about to be knighted? Does it feel the power, Taylor? Oh, yeah, he sh- he deserves a knighthood. He's I'd, a legend. I'd love to see him get knighted. Have you ever watched Phil the Power Taylor play yeah, darts? Though? Yeah, I've watched a bit of darts. No, Who comes, comes out with comes out with models on each arm. He's a fucking rock star, man. Yeah, he's like he's six, a rock star. He's about sixty five years old with about three beer guts on him. He comes out with these two yeah. stunners on his each arm, and he comes. Out I heard just... you talking about darts. I heard you talking about darts before, like it's not a real sport. And I tend to agree, although I do think that darts looks like a rocking good time if you were there. You oh, know what I mean? Like you're all singing and carrying on, and like, I love that shit, man. You've... Yep, we're back. Scott Adams is the guy who created the Dilbert cartoons. Ah, oh, where wow, does he does he does live streams? I bet they're really popular with all the lefties. No, no, actually, he is a lefty, but they're really popular with like Trump people. Yeah, because he he says some stuff that, uh, well, I, is right. Well, he, well, yeah, because he's like he's he plays it. It's funny, like his personal politics, he's like on the left, but he's like actually yeah. Trump's really good at what he does. Yeah. So whether you like it or not, he's good at what he does, and then so a lot of Trump people follow him for that. But he's a smart dude. He's he's very calm, like kind of you know he smokes a lot of weed. You know what I mean? <laughs> so <laughs> well, if you, I, I like him. I haven't watched him for a while. I used to like a couple of years ago, but he's like he's always like okay. Um, so we're having our coffee here, and uh, let me tell you something about uh, CNN. They're really kind of shitty at what they do, and here's why. <laughs> because people don't understand that uh, Trump, Trump's messing with them, <laughs> you know? Like, so, well, we, were a, we were having a discussion about Trump the other day, and we, we kind of had a consensus of we just think that he is the greatest troll that ever lived. He's definitely a hand grenade, like, over-the-fence politics, if that makes sense. Yeah, but I see... I think people are out there saying that he's he does all this stuff because he genuinely believes it. I think he does this stuff because he knows it's going to piss people off. I think that's part of what his policy process is. is I'm going to do this just to give people the shits because I can. Well, look at <laughs> look at the... Well, look at the psychology of the guy, right? He's like a swaggering New Yorker. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's a New Yorker in fancy... So he's like, he's... If you go up to a New Yorker and tell them that they can't do it, they're probably going to say, fucking look at this motherfucker, I'll show you. You know, he's that kind of attitude anyway. So this is exactly when, you, when, you hand him, when you hand him a lot of power, <laughs> it's probably more likely <laughs> that he's going to say, oh, well, you know what? You, you can come to me and you can say all kinds of things, but I tell you, I just put out one tweet and watch you all blow your fucking heads off, okay? Okay, that's how we're going to roll. You're going to come to, are you going to tell me that I can't do it watch it. I'm going to make a big beautiful building and I'm going to I'm going to throw liquid gold on that motherfucker okay you say that I can't do it watch this watch <laughs> me do it <laughs> he's that kind of guy so yeah I fully agree but it's always always amazes me people get so bent out of shape over him. well it's politics they got to get bent out of shape over something you know? this is very very true um, Look at Warrington, 6-0 up. Yeah, well, 32, oh, he's in. 32, yes, he's in. 32 and a half minutes in, and Warrington looks like they've just gone in for another try. We're here live on Fergo on the League Freak podcast. You're listening to live commentary, sort of, during the game <laughs> between Warrington and St. Helens. Warrington's just gone 10-0 up. Conversion to come, guys. <laughs> That's us done. That's wow, that. you did it better than we do. That, that, ben Murdoch, Masala. Ben Murdoch, Masala. Ben yeah. Murdoch, Masala. He's, he's had a big career, the, I'm sure. Somebody help me the, out here. He I don't play, know what I'm talking he used, about. He used to play for the Tigers. And they he used to play him, for the Tigers. They, they let him go just when he looked like he was about to be good. Oh, coot. Ah. That's a Ben Hunt drop, that one. <laughs> he just Ben sat, Hunt has his own classic... He, he, he has his own category of drop. Co- coot just sat, bad drop, yeah. Coot just sat he there ben under Hunt the high ball. It. Yeah, he sat there under the high ball, and then he shit his biscuits, and it's all over the floor. Warrington takes, <laughs> picks up the ball... Yeah, it was two tackles later. And let's talk about the bun for a second, because if you can go a beard with that chin, the snowplow beard and chin with the bun on the back, I reckon that makes him extra aerodynamic. What do you think? Like, that's how he got through the tackle. He put his chin out and his head down, and he just plowed right through. I think there's merit to this. Let's have a look at other players who've got that. None. How many aerodynamic? None. He's the only one. I think we've, I think we've nutted this out. 
<laughs> Nick Minute, Nick Minute, Warrington, ten nil up. There you go. He's he's Rashford oh. with the bent nose. Yes, I was going to say. It looks like it's been the poor victim of a door. It's look like it looks like he looks like his father made him kick goals when he was a kid, and the ball kept bouncing off the post and hitting him in the face, <laughs> like <laughs> repeatedly. His father, he's like, do it again, <laughs> do it again, you silly shit. <laughs> no, I don't want to. My nose is bleeding. Shut up. You'll never he's... play for Warrington unless you do it again. You know what his nose looks like? It looks like the down pipe on a gutter that someone's backed into. <laughs> Absolutely nailed it. The descriptions, the commentary, and the conversion. Everything about that was perfect. Some very happy <laughs> Warrington fans there in the crowd. She yeah. looks like the mother of one of the players. She's probably just happy to be out of Warrington for the day. Yeah, well, you know the thing about Warrington. <laughs> is, uh, you bought a one-way ticket. <laughs> You know the thing about warranted chicks, you can I'm smell. not going back to that shit, hole. <laughs> what is it about warranted chicks, mate? You can smell them. <laughs> from, from how far out? <laughs> She's got to be downwind. Downwind, I was going to say. It depends where you're standing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anything downwind of weirdness. <laughs> yeah, Dude, this well, is... this is now a test for St. Helens. This is a great service for it. It's going to be hard to come too. back from two tries down. Five to go in the first half. So, uh, Boogie, why are you here, mate? Tell us about all your podcasts you do, mate. You might as well give yourself a bit of a promotion while you're here. Uh, uh, follow at Boogie Bumper. Yes. Yeah. That's all you need to know. If, if you follow that on Twitter, then you'll get the rest of it. Periodically. <laughs> We're just Periodically that... podcasts will come out. <laughs> We're just saying that th- this moment, this, this meshing of... Virgo and the Freak and uh, the right. starting block was it was inevitable it was going to happen at some time sooner like or later like two kingdoms I've yeah. been watching a lot of Game of Thrones lately so it's like the, the wedding of two kingdoms I've not watched I mean? any Game of Thrones at all and neither have I neither have I till last oh, week really? and now Where I'm like halfway to? through season three halfway through season three okay because so one of one of our the dragon, early podcasts... The dragon chick has just burnt, like, the guy who gave her the army. That's where I'm up to. Okay. Oh, yeah, I know where you mean, yeah. So, earlier, in one of our early podcasts, I tried to describe Game of Thrones in two minutes to Andrew, and I got... I think I got halfway through season one, and then I got through... Then I did... I think it was a minute where I did it just through like sounds and gasps and yeah. stuff reaction and got up to about season four because <laughs> this was in response to on on the starting block i think uh greeno said someone summarized the whole series in about three minutes or two minutes or something like that really yeah i didn't remember that and so and so I, I challenged freaky to do the same thing and he got through about season two or three and so he decided to try and do it with with emotions and reactions and only got to about the same point in the same amount of time <laughs> so when, All but, it, when it was uh, emotions and things, I swear to God, that just become an one. What's that AMSR stuff for chicks to be oh, off yeah. to? Like that's all it yeah. sounds like. Just make it's, it, it's like this. Oh yeah, mm, yeah, get in there. You, <laughs> you are watching Game of Thrones. There is a dragon. <laughs> the dragon's fire singes the hairs on your testicles. From the left, and slowly to the right. <laughs> Not the taint. Put your hand over your anus. I was out at not the taint. Not the taint. Never yes. the taint. I I have a mate. Um, it's actually Greeno. One of my old roommate <laughs> called. <laughs> my old roommate uh, nicknamed Greeno the taint. And I said, why do you keep calling the taint? Why do you keep calling him the taint? And he goes, because I can't figure out whether he's a cunt or an asshole. <laughs> ah, very nice. That's not very nice. Green, that seems like a good bloke. <laughs> he's a good bloke. I, he's a good bloke. I, this is my roommate who said that at I, the time. So. The thing is, I find myself sympathising with Green an awful lot because I think I must be the only human in the world who's been as ill as frequently as he, he has this year. I think That's for every right. second week that we're doing the podcast, I'm I'm down with some sort of fucking virus. I often have to um, beat back people on Twitter who say that he's from West Africa. I'm like, no, 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 he's from Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have Ebola, <laughs> I swear. 
He's just he's being... got more he's got more perpetual illness than Freddie Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, if he was from West Africa, it'd probably be a better podcast. It'd be like, "Hey, I'm Boogie Bumper, and this is Green." Hello, I am Greeno. Welcome to the starting block. You know, we have very good podcast here for you. We love your podcast. And it's like, okay, Greeno, that's enough now. How long, yeah. be- how long before it starts giving people full fifty million dollars in, in some sort of yeah. giveaway through a prince? You know, you you, you know, know, my father is a prince. He will <laughs> promise if if only you deposit one thousand dollars into an account, you will be promised the, all the riches of the kingdom. Think about it though the con- the competitions you could have. No radio show in the world could match you for size of prizes and penises. If he was well, from West Africa, yeah. Basically stepping on it. That, that's... Reno, show him your dick. <laughs> show him your dick. Get that shit on camera. Show him your dick and your $50 million. Become a Patreon subscriber and you can see the West Africans cock. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you get subs, boys. That's how you do it in the podcast business. <laughs> Breaking them in. Breaking if, you're them in. if you're listening now on Twitter, just fucking go to the starting block on Twitter, drop the K, and just type... Greeno, show us your cock. <laughs> show us your cock. Prince Greeno. Prince Greeno. From West Africa. <laughs> oh, big tackle there from O. Clark. <laughs> <laughs> his Welcome mom, his, looks at home in this atmosphere. I was going to say, um, Clark's mum and dad. 12 could... down, 12 down at half time. He looks at home, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Clark, Clark's mummy and daddy didn't know how to spell real well, so they just went with a letter and thought, we can't fuck that up. <laughs> just, oh, done. Right, the man the bunch... general feeding the scrum, Patton. Anybody who's named Patton gets the nickname the general in sports now. Absolutely. Have you noticed that? I have, yes. Looks like the uh, Warrington team are playing for the half. There it is. Run Com- it out. Complete, there you go. complete lack of enterprise there. They weren't trying to even score a point in the last five seconds. They've given up. Basically throwing the game away, boys. They have. There. They've sh- they've shown their hand. They're busted. So halftime report from Fergo and the league freak. <laughs> yeah, well, um, at halftime, well, let's see. There was two tries scored, <laughs> both by Warrington. My computer fucked up and I disappeared. The live stream went down. and we come back and we start talking about Gruno's big cock. Tune in, Africa. Tune in for the second half. It's bound very to be... much like the semi final, really. Yeah. I think the only thing I remember from the semi-final comments-wise was I was told, um, who the hell eats an apple at 2am? And that was, oh, yeah, that was me. Right. Well, that's how hardcore we were. I was eating an apple at 2am. It's got to keep you regular, though. Yeah, well, I'm surprised there wasn't a moment there where I disappeared and just went and did shit, shit some, <laughs> some time. Um, <laughs> probably would have lifted so, the, uh, the ratings a bit. Can I ask you, have I ruined your Saturday rugby league podcast? So I assume no, that you watch not. all the games today and then like you do a podcast about all the games. Is that fair? You, or? You, mm. you, you have made this so much more better than we thought it would be. Um, I'm terribly sorry. We, terribly we, sorry. We, yeah, what the hell? Um, no, we, oh, can you imagine? I mean, it's been a bad half for you. It's almost as bad as that guy's profile shot. But, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, look at it. Oh, man. That's wow, he, that's a nose, isn't it? That's wow. Terrible. He only breathes through his mouth. Do you reckon, <laughs> do you reckon think he's ever gone to a doctor thinking, and listen, maybe I should get this? And that they've booked an appointment, and he comes in, and the plastic surgeon just looks at him and goes, Fuck. <laughs> Fuck it. I, cannot, I, I cannot do anything with this. And he just you says, are on your says, own. Just wait here. And he opens the door and says, Hey. I can't even look at this fucking nosey. Jeez. I tell you, I tell you what, young man, you are a successful rugby league player. How about this? I hit you in the face with a baseball bat, and he goes like, "What? What? Haven't you got anything better?" And he's like, "Have you got anything worse? Come on now, let let me hit you in the face with a baseball bat. Let's see how this goes. This is the best solution I could find." I reckon the doctor probably look at him and say, "I think what we've got here is a situation that we can't straighten it, but we can." Given the the size of variance in the direction of the nose, we could probably add a third nostril. How about this? What if we make the rest of your face crooked to match the nose? <laughs> well, his teeth already are, so that's a good start. 
you get a, you get a rhinoplasty surgeon comes in and says, "How the fuck have you got three knuckles in your nose?" <laughs> What if we break both cheekbones and then put them at right angles, and then that will make the nose look normal uh, in a Polaroid, like in a in a widescreen shot? You'll maybe pass, but you won't be getting married anytime soon. Wow! Well. I reckon I reckon you could open beer bottles with that nose, eh? Hey? Uh, I mean, like un- unwantedly, like other people smash glass <laughs> in his face. Yeah. Oh my god, it's hideous! He's a zombie! No, it's just me! What are you doing? I, I think he could probably, if he wanted to, he could probably scratch someone's back with that without even having to turn his head. Ah, new career after football. Absolutely. He's like he's like Mr. Squiggle's useless brother. He doesn't have a pants for a nose, but he's just got a fuck nose. <laughs> when it comes to Mr. But Squiggle... Every, but every, Chris, every Christmas dinner he has to sit there while everybody praises Mr. Squiggle for making yeah. the most out of his career. <laughs> when it comes to yeah, Mr. Squiggle... Done so well. I think we need to address an issue with Mr. Squiggle, and that is, has anyone ever considered the fact that all those pictures he drew are actually made out of snot? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Carbon snot. Even worse, why was he snorting lead? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How is this a good message for kids? Yeah, you can draw pictures with your own snot. Go for it. Don't use tissues. Put a bit of pencil up there and just snot it all over a piece of cardboard. See if you can draw me a house. Oh, How pretty. Hi, children. <laughs> He's just this little freaky little dude from outer space who sits with a single mother on TV. <laughs> Why are we watching this? <laughs> Mum, this, I don't think this is a good influence. Shut up and watch the dick nose. <laughs> It'll be fine. He'll teach you how to be creative. <laughs> Use nothing but his I'm nose. Scared. <laughs> just sit I can't this. believe Garlo's is still a thing. Why is Vossy Why, got one why? Is that team? Andrew Voss? Yeah. He's is got, that Vossy? Yeah. yeah. You know, you wow. know Gala, right? He, he does a pie company, and we we went to the website, right? And he had a, a son who played a little bit of football, but then gave it up. But he's got his phone number on the site, and it says, "If you want to talk about the pies, just call me." So we were going to call him one day. <laughs> talk about say, Wes. Yeah, just say, "Tell us about the pies," and just what's your favourite one, and you know. Imagine, do it. imagine if he didn't like pies at all. No, no, I'm vegan. He hates them. He's like, can you? Do you know how many fucking pies we were made to eat when we were younger? Yeah, all the I ones that believe Vossi, I out. can't believe Vossi is being relegated to doing interviews for Garlo's pies. <laughs> remember, it's he used infa- to be. He was the guy who was supposed to take over from rabbits once upon a time. Remember? Ah, like, according, he was the according to the, he was um, the chosen one. According to the very very tough. NRL poll that was done recently, they revealed that Vossi is the number one caller in the game right now. What? Yeah. What what games is he calling? He's on Fox Sports the whole time. Fox, yeah. yeah. Oh, is he? Yeah. So there you I go. I don't know. I don't mind Vossi. Slim pickings. The ironic pickings. thing is, Sean Garlic does not sell one pie that's got garlic in it. There's something in that for everyone. Yeah, I think that's profound. That's very profound. How could you not, Sean? What, are you ashamed of the family name? Come on. That's Phil Good getting sent off. Des. Des, Des back in the day. Yeah, so right. you guys are NRL guys. I watch um, AFL. So would you put up, who's the best rugby league commentator of all time, in your opinion? Uh, Brayton Rabbits. Master. <laughs> hey, there's a comment that Brayton Aston made today. I have taken it out of context, but he said he's dropped two balls, but he's coming back hard. <laughs> and if that is not the greatest piece of sports commentary you'll ever That's hear, good. then I don't know what is. That's good. He should be commentating cricket at that point. Uh, he should. For weird like that, that would be perfect. Like, so subtle. See, I remember watching Richie Benno once and, like, the Indians, uh, the Australians were batting. The Indians were bowling. I can't remember who was batting, like, which Australian player, but he just blocked it into the ground. And the Indians, like, a three or four of them went, like, catch it! And it was just dead silence for, like, ten seconds. And then Richie comes on, and he's like, perhaps a slightly op- optimistic appeal. <laughs> <laughs> I love Richie. He was so understated with everything he did. It was so oh, bloody brilliant. It was the best. It was the best. 
I think that's that Craig Wing. Earlier yeah. this year, we heard a really good sideline comment from a Fox Sports uh, personality on the sideline, and she's standing with Alex McKinnon, who's in a wheelchair, <laughs> and she says, I'm standing here with Alex McKinnon. Oh. It's like, just, just not needed. And, you know, right? it was made worse by the fact that she was actually sitting down herself. Yeah. <laughs> I think she, it was something like he's standing alongside me, Alex McKinnon, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. The, worst, the, like, worst, the worst part is when they gave standing, uh, st- uh, Alex McKinnon a standing ovation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just rubbing it in. See, if we hadn't been the sort of people that get outraged over everything, we would have been outraged over that. Yeah. How insensitive. How could you? How insensitive. How could you? <laughs> He'll kick your ass, will he? <laughs> All right. Sorry, Alex. I'm sure you're a nice guy. You know, these things. Hey, what on earth is this that we're watching? You just learned to roll with the punches. <laughs> it's like it's like making fun of kids with cancer, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> nobody likes the fact that they've got cancer, but everyone likes to laugh. So... Somebody's going to have to lose. That that looks really. That exciting, makes me it? not want to <laughs> apply ever again. <laughs> it reminds me of Nadine's issues a couple of days ago. <laughs> Remember, she said she was on the porcelain pony for a few hours. We were talking about gravy. Oh, if, if Sean Garlic gets into the world of sausage rolls, then all hope is lost. I reckon sausage rolls though and rugby league go hand in hand. There's something about it, really? you know. Pie well, or sausage roll? Well, the players have, you know, put their sausage rolls into everything from, like, dogs, <laughs> beer, what else? In their own mouth. In their own mouth, yeah. Oh, Carney, Carney, the can. Wow. The legend in the pissing shed. <laughs> How long can you honestly talk about pies for, really? I think, I like think what we're point, learning here is that... Just look at Andrew Voss and say, listen, man... I ran out of pie material like three and a half minutes ago. <laughs> but Andrew would be doing like, look, I know it's I know it's late in the day and I know you've probably got a lot of things to do, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that you're going to come back up with a really hot piece of beef pie right here, right? Am I right? Are you hearing me? Are we on the money here? And Sean's like, yeah, Andrew, no worries, man. No worries. Do you want a, do you want a pie or something? I'd love a piece of pie. Thank you, Sean. Sean Garlic, ladies and gentlemen. Sean Garlic, ladies and gentlemen, hot live and from his factory right here on Fox Sports. <laughs> and there we are with some magnificent sausage rolls. Look at those things being boxed up. About to get frozen and sold fresh. <laughs> uh, Boss cricket, has to wear the little beard, beard net. In the Aussie cricket, posh. England is 2 for 89. Ooh, mm. still going. Cunts. Come on. The problem we've got is Cummins doesn't know how to bowl with the seam up. He just bowls. I was this just thinking that cross seam bullshit. It doesn't move and, anywhere. And yet, and yet he's and yet he's regarded as the best bowler in the world. <laughs> Imagine just... if he figures that out, Fergo. <laughs> yeah. See, see, I was I was a swing bowler in, when I used to play cricket. Um, so I hate watching captain, boys who have got captain got... coach of the under fifteen Bs, <laughs> Fergo. <laughs> oh, I retired when I was twenty five. Um, the sixteen, the sixteen-year-olds were bloody thankful for it too. <laughs> I was starting to get a bit of pace up by then. <laughs> <laughs> they cut you down in your prime. Yeah, they did. They said, "Look, we don't, you should, we don't think you should be playing in the sixteens anymore, mate." And I was like, oh, "I can't play with the big boys. I'm not playing anymore." And moved, Look, moved if I was if I wasn't having sex, if I wasn't having sex with your mother, kid, I wouldn't even be here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, you're supposed to call me dad when we're on the field. <laughs> Are you my new daddy? Watch watch this out swinger. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you covered after the bowl and delivery say, You missed that again, you're cleaning up your room tonight. <laughs> I'm sorry for ruining your podcast. Trust me, it's not ruined, mate. <laughs> what folk do you think you've ruined the podcast? You haven't ruined it. This is possibly been the greatest pe- podcast episode we'll ever do. Good. Excellent. It's only <laughs> downhill from here. At the at the risk of sounding like, you know, it's a, a pre-season bonding session, we should do a four-way one day. 
Absolutely. Oh, yeah, Greeno needs Greeno, to get in on this. Greeno pitched this a while ago. Yeah, I'm surprised he's not up. If he was up right now, he'd be in. Get him on Skype. I'll message him. Yeah, message he's him. He's not well. <laughs> I'm Greener. just taking odds to him. He's sick. <laughs> well, I, I'm just getting over a flu myself at the moment, so you know I can sympathise with him if that helps. If that helps get him online. All right, I'll let him know. Virgo sick too. Get up, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got a child and I've got a wife, so you know. I'm, I'm yeah. in the same boat as him. Yeah. For how long if you keep doing this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the child will hang around. <laughs> We need to, we need to whether he likes it or not. Footy tips. She's good at it. Yeah, she does footy tips for us. We get her on there. Which I try and go to her into to hang a shit on Mitch Moses and Parramatta. Oh, nice. Which has worked pretty well so far. We've got all these uh, YouTube videos. People go and check out our YouTube account. They'll see on there. We've got the same um, logo for all our podcast episodes. But the ones where my daughter's been on done her footy tips. There's like bright rainbow colours of unicorns and stuff on there so you can see <laughs> completely out of place <laughs> it works so well though she'll probably win the tip and comp though she was like, beating just, me for most of the yeah, year tick 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 yeah exactly you, know you what put I too much do? thought into it I want to do an unboxing video but like the worst one that's ever been put on the internet where like by opening the box I actually break whatever is inside of it I was, I, think thinking, I was thinking it'd be good if you just did an unboxing episode just inside the box, just in one old shoe. <laughs> what about, what about if you what about if you unboxed a box? An empty box. There's a box. An empty yeah, box. A box yeah. in the box. It could be like those Russian babushka doors. It could just have another empty box inside it. It never ends. It just never ends. Infinity. And then at the end you just get to the end and it's just yeah, a piece of There's Lego. a YouTube there's a YouTube clip out there, like when the new, when one of the new PlayStations come out. I think it was like PlayStation Three, and you have all those fucking idiots line up out front of the shop for like two yeah. days to get the new one. So this guy like went to the front of the queue. He camped there for a week, and he went in there and bought the first one. And he walked out and filmed it in front of everyone, put it on the ground, and smashed it with a hammer. <laughs> 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 and all of these nerds are screaming, "No, no! What are you doing? My God!" And he was just laughing Mine. and walked off. My greatest story about uh, PlayStation was, I think it was a PlayStation 3 when it first came out, and someone went onto eBay, and they went up there and they advertised very clearly that they were selling the box that the PlayStation came in. And in the description, they also said, you know, no, this does not contain a PlayStation, it is just an empty box for the PlayStation 3. And it sold for 350 bucks. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. Someone thought there was a PlayStation there. Learn to read, you fucking idiots. Wow. That was brilliant. Or, even scarier, somebody just bought the box. Yeah. Maybe oh, somebody bought the box. Oh, here's one of this. I'm a box collector from way back, and it's the only one I need to complete my set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Who doesn't like a good box, anyway? <laughs> I knew that was coming. I just wondered well, what angle it would uh, come from. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> See, we beat the Americans earlier in basketball. Great really? moment. Yeah, we beat them. No, I'm not. We, we beat them. Was it a, an official game or was it like a warm-up practice yeah, game? Yeah, it, oh, it was Well, it was a, a World Cup warm-up game, but it was an official Friendly. game. Ah, uh, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, it didn't really matter in the uh, grand scheme. Right. Oh, second half kicks off. Second half kicked 12. off. Live so from Wembley Stadium. And there's a hit up, and that's the end of our commentary for this game. We'll keep to, keep up to the <laughs> scores though. Yeah. No, it's not a hit up. That was a kick return. It's only a hit up if he plays the ball, isn't it? Oh, no. Well, <laughs> given how that could it was... be a hit up if there's no if there's no line of scrimmage? Given that he was they so kicked s- off. There's given, no hit up. Given he was so slow to actually receive the ball and take the hit up. By the time he actually caught the ball, the defensive line was actually 20, ten meters away anyway. It's basically a hit up. I'm trying to protect my ass here. I don't know if that's convincing <laughs> or not. I like this camera shot we regularly go to briefly of um, three blokes sitting at laptops. Yeah. Yeah, coaching has changed, hasn't it? Oh, now it's here's a line break. Bryce Goodwin making him look good. Yeah. What they don't tell you, what they don't tell you in like real sports broadcasting, which we will tell you right here, right now on the League Freak and Fergo podcast, is. When it goes to a shot of the coaches up there on a laptop, they're actually playing Fortnite, <laughs> not looking at any stats or anything. 
Man, I just got killed by another six-year-old. <laughs> this Damn it! Shit, I hate this game. <laughs> They're being abused by 12-year-olds with temper tantrums. He keeps calling me a prick. I don't like it. It's not fair. I didn't do anything to him. Every single Craig game, Bell- they all Craig say Bell- that they have really good at PUBG. with my mom. <laughs> oh, knock on. Bad knock on there. Yeah, Knowles. Well, yeah, they've played like shit in this game, St. Helens. They've not turned up at all. Yeah, they'll, they'll the Masala, kind of... the bun, put him in the ground, which is good to know. They kind of busted asses in the semi too, weren't they? I can't even remember who they beat in the semi, so... It was a, it was a championship team, remember? Oh, that's right. Halifax, who was it? It was Halifax. Halifax? Yeah, it was yeah. Halifax. Because they're known is as... St. The... Helens the richest team? Like, they're the ones with all the money, right? St. Helens? They've got... They're one of the richest. Yeah. Yeah. Who's yeah. the best? Like... Because, like I said, it was always St. Helens or Wigan, and Wigan always used to be the team in the 90s. Right now, yeah, St. Helens, St. Helens on top is... of the ladder. And they're dominating the competition. I think they're about six wins clear of everybody else with a few rounds to go. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it was Halifax. So I remember was talking about, you know, the Halifax, Halifax used to be known as the Blue Sox. Yeah. And as the English fans do, every time they're going for their team, it's like, come on, you Saints, come on, you... Warriors or whatever it is, and I was saying, come on, socks. All been there. It was a good joke, that one. Probably a little too obvious. Come on, your socks. It's just come, come on, socks. Your socks. Come on, socks. Yeah. Oh, it's a dart oh, mode for dummy oh, heart. That'd be he great. Yeah, I held that. That him up. Goodwin looking like Graham Langland here. I know. What Lachlan the hell? Coot with the first tackle of his career, right? <laughs> that is the worst attempt from dummy heart. He says he's got it down. He's pretty confident. Oh, the ref yeah, going for the video to... like every other try in rugby league. Yeah, he's going Referee. to the Porto big screen here. Got no try. Porto is actually doing the sponsorship for the uh, Super League over there in England as well, even though they are Australian based. Mm. We're doing everything. Oh, really? We... Well, we're doing everything we can to try and get some sort of sponsorship deal out of a Porto. So we're just going to mention them every time we do a, some sort of broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we. By work. the way, we love. We love chicken on this show. Ooh, yeah, yeah, Portuguese chicken, especially. Yeah. Portuguese chicken based out of Australia chicken. That's Let's what we Let's have a look at this. He picks it up. Australian Portuguese chicken. There's, there's no <laughs> obstruction there by a good one. That's the most authentic chicken you can get. Hit and spin. Let's have a look. Outside of Portugal. Well, that he is a lovely sport. slow motion of the play the ball. He's picked that up cleanly. There's a head clash. Clean pick up. Um... They, they, I thought they were just here. looking at the grounding. What no, the no. fuck? Oh, he's looking at all sorts of groins and crutches here. He thought he was Cameron Smith for a minute and just thought he could cheat his way to a try. <laughs> but yeah. unfortunately, you're <laughs> in England now, mate. Yeah. These are the sort of camera angles they use on like shows like A Current Affair when they're talking about obesity. They just say, <laughs> go out and get us pictures of crutches. Look at the wobbling cellulite. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth are we supposed to be looking at here? 360 right on his ass. So like, the six is right on his right on his hole. It covers the crack. I mean, you could probably lose the little loop thing because his ring will be doing that anyway. It's like a target, isn't it, for John Hopawati? Yeah, it's right there. Why do we keep looking? At <laughs> Way this? to make it easy, boys. <laughs> I don't know what they're looking at here. This yeah, makes what no are sense. They looking at? Do they are they, they like looking at if high the tackle? Saints players are offside? Surely not. It's like they're on side from Mark, what is can you? Look at? You're kidding me. What? Why is that a no try? I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, neither do we. <laughs> He's... What? Do... Hang on. So it's a penalty to St. Helens now. Why? Did he knock it on when he no. played the ball? No. That... It what looks was... like that's what they're what they've ruled on though. No, but if it was a knock on there to be a scrum, they're, they're saying it's a penalty, it's some sort of infringement. Anyway, it looks, like, it looks like overnight. Uh, incorrect play the ball, like he didn't play the ball properly or something. That's the only no. thing it could be, right? They showed his foot touching the ball. I think what's happened is in the last three hours between the last NRL game and this game here, someone has completely rewritten the rules of rugby league and we haven't <laughs> been informed. <laughs> that's that's actually very have, possible. They should have sent us a memo. We need that's the, memo. the thing I hate most about that's the thing I hate most about modern sport like NRL, AFL, AFL is the same. They all change the rule. Like, oh, the game's too much X. 
So mm. we need to change the rules. And, but I'm like, every time you change the rules, you're creating a new game. You realize mm. that, right? And so new- you're just changing the game into something else. And then next year, you're going to be complaining about the new game that you've created exactly. because you changed the fucking rules again. Exactly. So just let the rules be the rules and just shut the fuck up. How about that? Rugby League, though, has a long history of constantly changing the rules. It goes all the way back to the, the first year it started yeah. and all it's done. It's almost like it's part of the um, some sort of cultural thing it has to do every year. It's like, okay, let's all get together in our little group and get all the Masons in and let's talk about the rules again. <laughs> it's like a Luciferian order of the Knights Templar. Yeah. <laughs> get together and rewrite the book. <laughs> We'll do your secret handshakes in the uh, the temple and <laughs> bow before your god king. Right, but you just know the NRL who lets all the fans down. We do. <laughs> <laughs> you just know every year the person that sits there and says, "Nah, I don't reckon we should change Jonathan." They sit Try down in time. the corner afterwards and say, "Yeah, let's not bring him back next year." <laughs> Gus, when Gus, when is somebody going to say that about Gus? <laughs> right, the world's the greatest D-R-A-D. player has just attempted to score yeah. a try in the corner. It looks like he may have bounced it. But there he is, God's gift to rugby league. Has he scored? Ben Thaler, it looked like a try to me. They're going to find it. It looked what, like dry time. What new rule are they going to bring in here to deny this one? Wide open. He should have scored this. The... He should have scored this. Yeah, Definitely should have scored it. I reckon he might have bounced it. Let's have a look. Uh, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Is uh, he going right. to hit the post first? He's dropped he it. dropped oh, it. He dropped it. That's a, that's, was that Bryce Goodwin again? Yeah. Yep. Wow. The, uh, All the Saints fans. St. Yeah, Brown's the only place where the chicks have more tats than the men. <laughs> Bryson Goodwin, the Reg Gaznier of Super League. Yeah. <laughs> How did he not score this? This was an easy try. Especially for the world's best player. Uh, he didn't score it because of Bryce Goodwin. Don't you understand? Yeah. Yeah. Bryce Goodwin's on the field. That's why he didn't score it. Man, he should be the next man of steel. Pretty sure he's going back to South Sydney next year, eh? I'm not surprised after this stellar performance. Mm, world beater. They need some. Why do you leave English? anyway? Because he's shit. Why do you leave in the first place? Really? Yeah, he's shit. Oh, he looked like he dropped Get more money, though. Yeah, he's probably getting more, more money over here in, in the Super League. It was either this is or he's going to be playing for Newtown. <laughs> is there <laughs> much difference in the pay these days, though, between yeah. Super League and NRL? Yeah. Oh, NRL's you know, a lot more pay. I think it's almost double now, wouldn't it be? Well, they wouldn't have would any think... million dollar players over there, that's for sure. Although the currency yeah, is... You would... The currency exchange might if, actually make the English players worth a lot more. If if NRL is the top league, which it has been for the longest time, then surely the top league should command the top pay, right? But yeah, that yeah. wasn't the case like back in the day. But now you would think with the new uh, pay arrangements that the NRL set up a couple of years ago, right, that the, the, like now the NRL should be paying better because I know there's a few English players over the last few years who have come out here and they're like, you know, you would think that they could play in England and be a superstar, but they actually want to come out here and play like in the best league. So like hats yeah. off to them, you know, like tip of the hat. Like, good on you, man. Is that Lomax? Yeah, he just ran straight at the only defender on the field. Yeah, he did well. <laughs> what a genius. Yeah, no, that's that's kind of true. The um, the NRL does have the highest paid players now because I don't think you're going to be able to get anyone in a, any Super League club, doesn't matter how good they are, to earn a million, the equivalent of a million dollars Australian. That'd be right. unheard of. It's just not possible these days, I wouldn't think. Is it is it a case like the top tier get the best uh, pay in Australia, but if you're like an average player, you get better paid in England? Is that the way it works? No, I think, no, I, I think in England it's more get a case. way better in Australia. Yeah. In England, it's a case yeah, of, right. I think um, they don't have that much money in the game anymore. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Oh, good tackle there. It's only nice. in a few cities now in England, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty much Wiggins, yeah. St. Helens, Leeds. That's pretty much it, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's gonna it's going better elsewhere, Canada. France. That's it. Yeah, they've got a Canadian team. They'll have a Canadian team next year. Really? Yeah, there was I know bit... they tried to push it into America for a long time, but the Americans just never really got 
got the idea of it. Same with the rugby. They tried American rugby for a while, it just never really worked, so... Yeah, it's the whole, you know, not wearing all that safety equipment. Well, exactly. Like, you try to compete with American football over there, you've got rocks in your head, you know? Like, there's no way the Americans are going to give up gridiron. They actually so. had... There was a an episode of Man vs. Food where... Uh, I love that American, show. Love yeah, that guy. American... An American rugby league team was on it, featured on it, and it was the Rhode Island Rebellion. And I can't remember what You've they were trying to do. You've got a great reference there. That's a fantastic <laughs> reference. I know. That, I know. I know. Holy I, shit. Saying, uh, we I need to get you on the things. starting block for shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So Man versus food Island and Rebellion the rugby league team, Rebellion. the Rhode Island Rebellion. Like, holy yeah. shit. They Is this guy in a time song. machine? How the hell did he come up with that? <laughs> I've got a beautiful mind. That's what it is. It is beautiful. That is phenomenal. Ladies and gentlemen, Russell Crowe, league, otherwise known as the League Freak. Now, I did have a bit of uh, rugby league news from England for you, Freaky. Oh, really? What was it? Bradford. Uh, they're going to be moving their home games to Dewsbury next year. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> they're not even close. Local MP Judith Cummins is fighting to keep Bradford Bulls in the city following Chairman Andrew Chalmers' decision to move the club to Dewsbury. Chalmers said stay keep at Bradford, Oddsall... Keep Bradford, Bradford. <laughs> keep Bradford, Bradford. That's exactly. Chalmers says staying at Oddsall is no longer financially viable and has agreed to a two-year deal for the Bulls to ground share at the Tetley Stadium from next season. No way. That would be like moving... I'm trying to think. That would be like moving the Melbourne Storm... To Campbelltown, <laughs> it's it's like, pretty it's pretty crazy. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. I can't believe it. Andrew Chalmers, he used to, he's got the best quote I've ever heard from a non-Australian. Do uh, share. Uh, that was when he said that the Australian team was uh was the least scary team he, that had been selected that he'd ever seen, and then Australia went out and beat New Zealand by a record scoreline in New Zealand. Um, yeah, former head of the New Zealand Rugby League. I don't know how he ended up owning in the Bradford Bulls, but it's gone well, apparently. Well, they were broke and they needed someone, so they took anyone they could find, and he just put his hand up. Unbelievable. What Like, that seriously. They, they, they've got a whole city to themselves, and he moves to fucking Dewsbury. Well, the thing I like about this, okay, is that the politician there has said... Um, it is, it is my view that the Bulls are not just a business. They are part of Bradford's sporting and cultural offer. I will continue to stand with Bulls fans and will push all parties to find a way to ensure that Rugby League still has a permanent home in Bradford South where it belongs. Now, given that this club's gone broken, busted, what, five times or something in the last two or three years? Yeah. Why is it that when the club finally decides to relocate out of Oddsall that she goes, oh, we've got to do something to save this club? Not when it's broken about to fucking fold, but when it just relocates to another stadium. You see, there's something that, and I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I feel like the Rugby Football League actually bought the stadium, but then they had some deal with the council, and there was something going on there. And I think what is actually happening is that the Bulls are basically throwing their toys out the pram, and they want to make some sort of deal work better for them. And I think that's what's actually going on. But it's just like, what a mess. What a stupid mess. Could it be that Bradford is like the Gold Coast? Because I know that the Bradford soccer team went broke like in the early 2000s as well. Well, yeah. Well, they they used to ground share at the Bradford soccer team stadium. And if you've ever seen their stadium, it looks like one quarter of Wembley Stadium, but then the rest of it looks like Brookvale Oval. It's really <laughs> weird. I'm not even joking. Like, if you look up, a, I can't remember the name of it, maybe... Valley Parade, I think it was, maybe. That's um, yeah, like Valley Road, Valley Parade. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's like there's, it's really is. It's like one quarter of uh, Wembley Stadium, Valley Parade, and uh, hang on, that's when it burnt down. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, look it up. Fucking Valley Parade. It's the weirdest looking ground I've ever seen in my life, and. Uh, yeah, they used to ground share there, and then they went back to Oddsall. But by the time they went back to Oddsall, they were already starting to go broke. 
And, uh, yeah, it's just a bloody mess. Yeah, all of British Rugby League is a bloody mess, really. Otzel's one have of you those... ever seen the two... Sorry, Andrew. You know. I was going to say, Otzel's one of the few grounds in the in the world that's actually not a rectangle. It's more of a rhombus. <laughs> they just had like a pensioner guy who was doing the lines that day. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that Specsavers ad where he does the lines in all different ad different directions. <laughs> That's right. The, the the lines drawn on the ground are never the same. It's like yes, yeah, it's like lightning have drawn them on the all in different directions. It just you look you look at that stadium and it makes no sense. But yeah, so I think what, you know what I reckon that they want to do? I reckon they want in on the deal when the Rugby Football League sells Odsal Stadium and then they want to work out with the, the council to build a new ground for themselves. That's what I reckon they're pushing for. But that's just a guess. I reckon that's pretty much on the money. Yeah, I've got no mail, but that's my guess. Reading between the lines. You were talking about crazy stadiums. Have you ever seen um, in Scotland, in the Scottish Soccer League, uh, there's two teams, Dundee and Dundee United. Have Mm -hmm. you ever seen a picture of those two stadiums? No, let me look them up. What are they called? So, Well, put in like Dundee, Dundee United stadiums. They're both on the same street and they're basically like next door to each other, the two stadiums. No way, you serious? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No way, look at that! (laughs) That's ridiculous. Ah, <laughs> oh, Scottish people are so dumb. <laughs> that is so fucking stupid. It's so that Scottish. So <laughs> fucking what? stupid. And you know the funny thing is, there'll be people that go for both them them teams that'll be like, oh, I'm not one of those idiots that go for that team. <laughs> but you live <laughs> on the same street, you fucking morons. <laughs> Imagine being a Dundee fan speaking to a Dundee United fan and saying, where are you playing this week? Oh, at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. Holy Isn't hell. it a great photo? Look yeah, at that. that really so you oh. could basically, like, you could throw a paper plane off one stadium and hit the other stadium. That's yeah. how close they are for the podcast listeners. Uh, yeah, if actually, if you're sitting in the um, the far end of the... The one that's got the red seats in, I can't quite see which one it is. That's United. Okay, that's guess, Dundee United. If you sit at the far end of the United one, you could probably see over the roof of the other end and into the Dundee one. Yeah. <laughs> like, Dundee United is the richer team and Dundee is the poorer team. But, yeah, same fucking street, man. That's obscene. That's crazy. Wow. But, but at the same time, I fucking love that. Yeah, it's one of my favourite things. I love that. It's, it's so absurdly it's like we're not playing. We're not playing in your stadium. Fuck you. Yeah. We'll make our own. <laughs> right here. Yeah. Right next door. Fuck you. Yeah. We're actually sharing the same car park. <laughs> they probably have the same bloody plumbing. <laughs> they but they share Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> they would. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. Oh, that's, that's the brilliant. dumbest sporting thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> All of a sudden, Anthony Seabol, he's been challenged. This is stupid. Yeah. I was, was going to say, it's, it's interesting seeing these two rather large, expensive stadiums um, completely surrounded by council houses. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Dundee's a shit old man. <laughs> They call it they call it the asshole of Scotland, like the toilet of Scotland, <laughs> if you're a local. <laughs> so you know a place is really, really bad when uh, the Romans get to the end of the world and they say, Look, fuck it, just build a fucking wall here, this will do. <laughs> exactly. We don't want to go in like, We don't want to go in there and they, we don't want to let them out. <laughs> so yeah. Let's just put a wall in. Adrian's wall. I like the fact that Dundee United are not united with Dundee. Yeah. <laughs> What's well, funny, you know, like because you got Manchester United and Manchester City, right? Yeah. But um, like eighty percent of Manchester goes for Manchester City. Manchester United is seen as like the foreigner team. They don't yeah. like them. So most of people in Manchester don't like Manchester United. Which is they funny. Like Manchester City. It's just funny given the fact that both sides are full of foreigners. Mm. When was mm. the last time someone born in Manchester now they, actually played Now they are. Now they are, but back in the day, like, um, City was always, like, City was the City team. Like, it's Manchester City, right? 
Manchester United is the team that um, like everybody else who doesn't like City goes for. You know what I mean? Which is like twenty percent of Manchester, but. Manchester United is the big team because of all the foreign sponsorships and shit that happened under Fergo. So, no relation to mine, unfortunately. N- no, you didn't pass any money. All this on time, TV. all this time, we've been talking to uh, Mr. Ferguson. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Alex Ferguson. <laughs> He's not a sir yet. No, I'm not related to any of the prominent Fergusons. Um, no. I hear, I hear. In order to re-sign David Beckham, um, part of the contract clause was you were allowed to have sex with Posh Spice. Is this true? Can you confirm this, sir? If, if that's the case, then I'm glad I turned the offer down. <laughs> like, no, I don't have a skeleton fetish. Thank you very much. Yeah, David. like I could just go go to the nearest bit of scrubland and just you know stick my dick in a pile of sticks. Did, it, I'm sorry, Victoria, did you star in that Scream movie? Were you the mask? Was that you? <laughs> the pale skin and the black eyes? I think that's you. I think yeah. he does. <laughs> that was with that snooty, shitty face, look on her face. She's never happy. <laughs> exactly. Never. Never. She should be. She's very rich. Yeah. But, uh, no, she she sort of decided that the, uh, the name she had for herself as a, quotation marks, Bicycle. musician... Musician, yeah, um, artist should should be the uh, the the attitude she she just goes with for the rest of her life. So she pretends to be posh yeah. all the time. Yeah, she just she's an like artist. She's, she just looks like she's from Essex. You used to be about the music, man. You changed, man. Do you remember when someone named their greyhound after her? No, really. Yeah, I'm posh not. A, this is gonna, no, this is going to sound like a joke. Somebody, oh, Victoria there was Beckham. A, no, no, it was called Mrs. Beckham. Because it was a city bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and it used to race. Yeah, it used to race in New South Wales. Uh, I bet it could sing about the same as well. Probably. But still, if you were like, if you were in the RSL at one in the morning and you were watching the dish lickers and you had nothing else to do, just throwing tenors around and you saw Mrs. Beckham show up, you'd probably put a tenor on it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah Mrs. Why Beckham, not? why not? Just for a laugh. Um, while all that went on, um, St. Helens scored a try almost in front, and then whoever the goal kicker was missed a dead easy goal Lachlan from right in front. Coot. Scotland's Lachlan Coote. He, he hooked it horribly. Um, and Saints were just Good on the attack on. and lost the ball. Somehow Saints Warrington look like they're coming back, though, to be fair. They yeah. look like they've upped the, um, the, up the intensity. Yeah. I mean, I, I suppose the best way to explain this game, as far as the matchup goes, is it's kind of like... Um, the Melbourne Storm playing against the Dapto Canaries. <laughs> and at the moment, the Canaries are leading. <laughs> That's kind of what so we're at some about. at some point, Melbourne's going to be like, with 10 minutes to go, they'll be like, all right, we better win it. Yeah. Okay, good luck, guys. <laughs> that, that's what we're expecting. But, yeah, this this was a bit of a lopsided game. We, we kind of thought St. Helens would have wrapped this up after about 15 minutes. But, but it might be one of those beautiful, like, cup wins, you know? It one could those... be. The magic of the cup. The magic of the cup. Oh, good take under the high ball there by the Saints. Not much else going on there. Does appear to be quite a pro Warrington crowd there. Yeah, I wonder. <laughs> they were worried that they were going to have some problems because after this game, they've got that. 1895 Cup, and they had the witness supporters who really don't like the uh, Warrington supporters. Yeah. But, you know, it just depends whether it was Dole Day and witness and they could afford to go down to London. <laughs> League Freak, I'm getting the feeling that you spent a little time in witness. <laughs> Is that a fair comment? No, I just... I, it's, it's probably not well known to people that haven't followed me for a long time. Is that I used to be on all the English rugby league boards and so I and I used to wind them up for many 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 years and so I know all the ways to really piss them off <laughs> and still presses the buttons and it still works I can't help it <laughs> <laughs> he was trolling he was trolling before trolling was cool yeah Re- in real life trolling yeah yeah and the pre-internet trolling, the 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 modern day translation is you're an arsehole. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, there was um most country um barman 
were some of the best trolls you'll find. Oh, yeah. Which I was one of. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. There's one little story. Oh, like... yeah, I listened to that episode. You worked in your dad's pub, right? No, it was just was a pub, pub in the pub in the, the township there, this time oh. the country town I worked in. There's... Had one bloke come in one day and he's... Drunk, drunk men in the bush will do weird things which they think is impressive to females. And <clears> this <throat> one guy came in and he asked for... Like, we used to just cook up fucking pies in the microwave and shit. And he asked for a pie, so I cooked up for him. And he's there with this girl he's trying to trying to hook up with. And I've given him the pie and charged him for it. And he says, oh, that's not very hot. I went, your mistake. So I put it in the microwave for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Stick of the room out. Take it out. It's rock hard and black and boiling hot. And I hand it to him. And I take, I charge him again for it. And he said, would you charge me twice for it? I said, well, I've got to pay for electricity. I said, fuck it, Al. I said, do you want sauce with that? He said, well, I can't eat that. It's ruined. I said, no, but it's fucking hot now. That's for sure. <laughs> Come on, hero. Have a feed. You can always tell city folk when they go into a country pub. They just don't, they don't fit in. They don't no. belong there. No, they don't. I remember, like, I was in North Queensland and I was drinking at, like, this bowling club. And it was the kind of place where you just leave a pile of money at your seat at the bar. Yes. And they'll just keep filling your glass and they'll just adjust your money. Yep. So I went out for a cigarette and I came back in. It was in Mackay and I was only there for a week. But this is, like, the third day in. I just got blind the whole week. And so third day in, like, I'm going out for a cigarette, come in and my money's gone. And the barmaid came up to me and she said, Oh, I'm sorry, mate, but somebody came in, a stranger came in, so I put your money just down here, yeah. <laughs> behind the bar, and I looked at this guy, and he's drinking a two he's new out of the bottle, and I said, oh, I, bet he's, I bet he's from Sydney, right? Because I'm, I'm from Sydney, like, if you, and he's fucking wearing like a half suit, you know, <laughs> and if, this guy's like, yeah, yeah, you know, like, yeah, this is pretty nice up here, but they, all of these motherfuckers are really slow, like talking to everybody in the pub but to me because he knew I was from Sydney too. He's like, oh, everyone's here really. They're really slow up here and, like, they're fucking stupid and stuff. And I looked at him and I'm like, are you, mate, like, do you want to walk out of here? Or? <laughs> like, and I'm, I'm like, I looked at, like, the guy sitting next to me, another guy who I've been drinking with for the previous two days, like a North Queenslander. I said, I don't even know this bloke. And he goes, don't worry about it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the thing, okay? When when a bloke in the country is being insulted and he acts all calm and chill, that's that, worse. That person's about to get fucked up hard. Uh, exactly. Because this is the thing, okay, where I was, a lot of the farmers out there, they drive around obviously in utes. And mm-hmm. the back of those utes contain things like ropes, chains <laughs> yep. a lot of a lot of heavy tools you don't want to piss them off you might find no. yourself tied to something you don't want to be tied to now this guy thought like the sydney style of like being like acting like the big man in a pub would work in a fucking shitty little pub in Mackay. you know yeah, yeah, yeah don't <laughs> nah yeah i ended up saying i ended up saying to him mate you better walk out now because if you keep going you're gonna get fucking smashed here you know not by me but these guys are gonna fucking ruin you you know like you need to leave <laughs> That's exactly right. oh what are you on their side eh? i thought you were from sydney i'm like yeah but i'm not a fucking idiot <laughs> <That's laughs> <right. laughs> it's exactly right and they could they could spot you from a mile away. Oh, they all shouted me beers after that. Yeah, good on you, mate. It's always a good. One. Uh, let's have a look. The footy Warrington still up twelve four. They're on the attack. Nothing happened there. Oh, that was cricket. Great. England's two for ninety five. Root is on forty six. Not out. Denley's on thirty. England England has been waiting a long time for a good root. Today might be the day. Yeah, he's been a dud for the last two games. Dud root. So there we are. Back to the footy. Root repeatedly, root repeatedly out prematurely. Yes. Doesn't stay in for very long. <laughs> he peaked. He peaked his interest somewhere around sixty nine, but then <laughs> lost lost his strength and went. See, <laughs> let that go thing. down the leg side. He really, he really should have been a good batsman, so his average could have been sixty nine. I know. He's really. That would have been I like the room. fact. I love the fact that he put his number at sixty six though. That's class. Like that's good <laughs> banter, you know. 
Route 66. Good, so good on you. He's the English. He's the captain of England, and he's like, "Yeah, make it 66. Who gives a fuck about these stupid numbers? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a laugh, eh? <laughs> it's like respect. <laughs> I'd like to know what the what the re- reasoning is behind some of the numbers, because you know Nathan Lyons got 67. Like, how did they come up with these yeah, stupid fucking numbers on the back of the test shirts anyway? Fuck knows. If you had to pick a number, what would it be? Me. Yeah, well, both of you. Like, I'll, if you were playing, my, mine would be eleven because that's where I should bat. Mine would okay. definitely be sixty-nine, one hundred percent. And like when they asked in the press conference, like, "What's the number sixty-nine for?" I'd be like, "I, I enjoy the sexual practice of," um, <laughs> and just like say it really deadpan. Yeah, yeah very and, subtle too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a bit fucking obvious, isn't it? <laughs> I, uh, See, I, I quite like. <laughs> I, I like the simplicity of being numbered the way you're supposed to. See, I hate mm. the fact that English players in the in the rugby league over there get to pick their own number and they stick yeah, with it so all year. Do they? Yeah, yeah, and they stick with it all year. I hate it. Yeah, no. In rugby, there shouldn't even be oh. numbers in cricket. It doesn't need numbers. That's but right. in rugby league, it should. Like everybody knows, like one is fullback, the wing is two and five, the centre yeah. three and four. You know, but not in like, just leave it the way it is. But not in England because you can be the fullback and probably be wearing number thirty-four, and you've got that all year. Or isn't Lockie Coo playing and he's twenty-three out there, like thinking he's yeah. Michael Jordan? Exactly. Everyone, that's the thing. Everyone goes for Jordan's number. Hey, it's a, I'd rather Shaq than Jordan. Thirty-four, man. Yeah, I'd rather Akeem Olajuwon thirty four. Oh, God. you're 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 a large one fan. Fuck man, mm-hmm. I've I I grew up like loving uh, the Rockets, and I've got an Olajuwon shirt. Like I was the whitest kid <laughs> in Western Sydney, walking around in the mid nineties with a fucking Olajuwon shirt on. You know, I, at the I, basketball courts. I <laughs> bought his Spalding boots. Hey, oh man, Akeem the dream. Yeah, yeah, and I tell you what, fucking league I, freak, I, I, I fucking had, I, you just went up, Fergo. You got to work. You got to work on this. I see because league had, freak just went like next level. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm a to, bit poor in the NBA. Uh, like Woody in. I'm a bit poor in comparison because oh, really? my my favorite player was always uh, Vince Carter. So I just Vince went Carter. I, I just went for the showboater. What? Yeah. yeah. Disappointing. We well, see. I grew up in the country, so I only got, I only got one or two channels on the TV. I didn't get to see much NBA, so I could only go whatever highlights I could find. And he was always come on. on. The Rockets went back to back, man. Rockets went back to back. Yeah, but you know, I had to fit Agro's cartoon connection with the NBA, and they always went with the kids' shows. So, you know, <laughs> Whereabouts? Been... What was the town you grew up in? It's called Humula. Humula. Whereabouts? Humula. Like New South Wales, Victoria? Yeah, New South Wales in the Riverina. So it's about, oh, okay. it's about 70 k's from Wagga. R- wow. Okay. You're out there. Yeah. So that's that's oh, AFL like country, though, fuck. isn't it? No, it was rugby league country when I was yeah. there. Yeah, right. Um, the population There's there... There's a lot of AFL players come from there, though. Like, yeah. a lot of famous ones. Yeah. The population out there, I think, in the last census for, for the township where I come from, was about 120. There you go. Yeah. Wow. So I was... When I was in year six, there were two other kids in my class, and my whole primary Amazing. school when I was in when I was in year six, my whole primary school from kinder to year six had about twenty four kids in it. Oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but we just missed Coot with a classic Lachlan Coot play: the yeah. ball, of the ball, the, the ball bouncing off his forehead, and when he was taking it. There's the future Titans coach right there, Justin Horbrook, being far too overdressed for this job. Yeah, why is he wearing a fucking suit? He's wearing it's not even the it's not the tie that annoys me. It's the vest. It's the vest. Yeah, it's a vest. Fuck your vest, man. Fuck your vest like, right off. He's looking like a rugby union coach with that vest on, or a soccer coach even. A soccer coach, yeah, definitely. If you think you're gonna make it in Australian rugby league wearing a fucking vest, bro, yeah. we've got news for you. That's right. It's, it's track, not gonna happen. It's tracksuits all the way, mate. Tracksuit and a tie. It's tracksuits all the way. <laughs> Or like one of those big parkers that Des Hasler wears all the time, and it's yeah. not even cold. It's like Des, what are you doing, man? It's like I'm just hiding my very skeletal frame. I'm actually 300 years old. <laughs> He's got to keep 70 his... minutes in, and their fullbacks cramping up. That's always oh, a real it's cramping time, up. Mate. Yeah, it's time wasting now. Oh, He's that. like get a hefty bloke to get a hefty bloke to rub my my thigh. Oh, there's the world's best player, Blake Austin, sitting on the bench. He didn't even get picked. Blake Austin. Blake Austin's over there. Yeah, he's, he's a, yeah. 
I mean, that Druid's Blake Austin, by the way. He's there actually, you go. He, got he looks like a Druid. Up. He's actually been dropped Manny, Manny. for this. He's actually got dropped for this game. He wasn't. He's not um, injured. He just That's wasn't it. picked in the night in the seventeen man squad. Ah, uh, he'll be spilling now. Yeah, he'll so go he's... on a rampage tonight. Drunken rampage. Are you sure? I thought he was injured. Oh, he could be injured. I saw a few said he wasn't <laughs> named. The way they, the way they worded the article, I saw said he wasn't he wasn't pit, and I thought, oh, he he's, sh- he's surely good enough to play in this yeah. shit comp, isn't he? Yeah, he's Blake injured. Austin. I can't remember what was wrong with him, but he's injured. And St Helens players are hailing the ball like a bunch of bad AFL players. Yeah. Constant knock-ons. Ten minutes to go. Saints need two tries. There's not going to happen. Best, though. And Holbrook's there going, I'm going from playing in a final, and I'm probably going to be in a grand final, to coaching the Titans next year. Oh, that's bad. Look at that. That's shocking. Errors. St. Helens, 16. Warrington, 4. Whenever I see a... Uh a headgear with, like, tufts of hair sticking out, I just automatically think soured now. Automatically think Mick Foley. Mick Foley. (laughs) Mankind. Yeah. (laughs) Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Oh, someone's got an ear injury. What's that about? Industrial deafness has hit this play hard. (laughs) Mike Tyson on the field. Yeah. Look, they're grabbing oh, his head. Come on, look at this. Yeah. Let go of the ball, mate. Let's play the ball. Let's play footy. What are you fucking doing? <laughs> he doing? He's just been sitting up and down trying to get up. He's, he's Steve Price, the former Dragons. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I remember him. Yeah. He's saying, if he dies, give me his chin. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he was. I need one. Amputate that thing. Let's have a look what happened here. Yeah, Nothing. is it a crusher? Oh, no, uh, soft. Nah, soft. he just got one on the chin. It's a tidy swinging arm into the jaw. As, it as, bounced off the ball, though. It came off the ball, Yeah, it bounced to off be the fair. Ball. Yeah, from behind. Uh, as, he's, try, he's trying to knock the ball out, Yeah, which is what you're supposed to do, isn't it, when That's you're going right. for a tackle, like hit the ball. That, that trainer looks like a, a fat Anthony Seabold. What was that about? <laughs> Every fat person looks Why like is he fat saluting Anthony you? Seabold. Look, he's saluting you. Well, he's doing the half salute. Someone tell him to take your hand down. The prince has already gone home. Sir, yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he is king. That's his name, right? Look, King 18. <laughs> he's saluting. He gave him the fucking salute. <laughs> the player's got to... I've got to pull rank. <laughs> My leash. <laughs> we, do you wish to continue? I will protect you. <laughs> I pledge my honour to you and your family, my lord. Release the hounds. My Get the great. Out Get out of my sight. You will massage my testicles after the game. Oh, Warrington's oh, in again. Oh, that's try it. time. Game over. Game over. Yeah, that's it. The Dabber well, Canaries have won this. What an upset. St. Helens with the, one of the hardest chokes we've seen in a long time. That's That's oh, the biggest oh. choke since the last time St. Helens choked. <laughs> Number eleven looks like Israel Folau <laughs> for St Helens. Hang on, is he casting? I guarantee he ends to... up playing. I guarantee he ends up playing in like French rugby or something and earn like three times as much money. Is he casting religious dispersions to the crowd? He should be. Fuck him. Yeah. I don't know, but all all game he's been having a lot to say to phages. Yeah. <laughs> the Frenchman probably couldn't understand it. The, I remember the old days party. when Mark Bosnich did a Heil Hitler to the Spurs fans. Oh, yeah, <laughs> God. Was, I remember that. That caused a lot of controversy. You know what's funny is that that was controversial at the time, but now people look at him and go, oh, he's a character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's funny is people do nothing and they get accused of being Nazis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's almost like everyone's forgotten what the Nazis actually did. Nobody even cares anymore. No, no, it's just like, you... you're a Nazi. You're a Nazi. Yeah. Everyone's a Nazi now. Shut up. Yeah. If you if you promise something that goes against my beliefs, then you're a Nazi. Isn't there some sort of theory thing about you know the number of times it takes for someone to become a to to bring up Nazism in a conversation or something like that? Yeah. What's it called? Is it? Called... I've never yes. Heard it. Shit. It's, it's called some, something the... rule. Yes. Oh God. It's a, named after a guy. And it's basically Hitler? like 
<laughs> it's it's like a mathematical equation for internet conversations, and the longer an internet conversation goes on between strangers, um, the lo- the likelihood that somebody will be referred to as Hitler increases. Oh wow! <laughs> Should I just call everybody? Starts with, Hitler an tomorrow? Starts with an M. Starts with an M. Godwin's law. The God Godwin's law. Never heard of this. Yeah. So the longer a conversation goes, the likelihood that somebody will be referred to as Hitler increases. That's and right. then when somebody gets referred to as Hitler, then the conversation's basically over. Yep. Okay. Oh, I'll keep that in mind, eh? Yeah. Goblin's law. Shut up, Hitler. <laughs> Just straight away, I'm gonna open with your first of all, I think you're Hitler. Open with Hitler. <laughs> yeah. Even if it's like a nice old lady who bakes cakes at church on Sunday, yeah. <laughs> you, fucking, so, you fucking so Nazi. Nice follower, I'm going to call him Hitler right now. Yeah, I don't want to. I, 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 live, I live to destroy Godwin's law and turn it into a one a one uh, reference equation. Yeah, I just want to turn it completely around where it's like there's a statistical anomaly and it's me. <laughs> call it Freak's law. Yeah, Freak's law. Sorry. First there was Godwin's first there was God, Godwin's law. But then God... it was Freak's law. You Nazi, there it is. <laughs> See, was... the problem is that none of my followers are nice. <laughs> they're, they're all scumbags. <laughs> we need to clip that. All of my followers are scumbags. Quite well, Lee Freak. He said it he said it quite a few times now. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case people missed it, he's to make sure no one misses out. <laughs> there was just in case you didn't know story all of my followers are scumbags and you're all Adolf Hitler <laughs> see maybe it could go. could you argue that Goldwyn's law was made up by a bloke who was a Nazi no yeah. Godwin yeah. sounds like a Jewish name <laughs> <laughs> it would be funny though if he was a Nazi and he was just using his study to try and just disarm people and he's going around giving all these Nazi ideas and it's like and then they call me a Nazi, and then the conversation's over. So I win. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but all the while, he is a Nazi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He created an equation to um, hide himself from any future conflicts online. <laughs> he scribbled it in the margins of Mein Kampf. <laughs> it's like you can't argue with Godwin, because eventually you'll call him a Nazi, but even though he is, you'll be wrong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, Goblin's Law. Fantastic. God, he made it a law. <laughs> he made it a law. How, only a Nazi would make that a law. Exactly. <laughs> Come on, big comeback from St. Helens here. Yeah, they did you can just imagine him when, when he's proposing a law and he comes to the end of it and he says... So my final solution is. <laughs> I think you just invoked Godwin's law. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that means you won the argument now. <laughs> exactly. Look at this. This is oh. the worst cramp in history. Oh, Look another at cramp. Like, he needs... grab, my, grab my toes. He needs... Grab my toes. <laughs> oh, it doesn't hurt so much. He needs an amputation is what he needs. That thing looks like it's killing him. I don't think Hack people... the knee. I don't think people have reacted that badly to a snake bite before. Two Look trainers out there. Fine. Now he's completely yeah. fine. Oh, there's another bloke down. They're dripping like flies. There's another bloke on the wing. He's down as well. <laughs> it's because it's 27 degrees. Oh, jeez. No, it's because they're in England. Oh, and so they look used at that to one. It. Put your shirt back on, right sweetheart. <laughs> no, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the worst thing about English summer is women wear less clothes in England. <laughs> See, I'm surprised that you said that and not freaky. I was just thinking, have they ever heard of the body mass index? <laughs> the best thing about England <laughs> is it's cold most of the time, so you don't have to look at the women. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, well, St. Helens need to score three tries on this one set. Bit of a challenge, but it is the Challenge Cup. It is cup. the Challenge Cup. Yeah. <laughs> That might be a bit beyond the If mind. there was ever a time, now's the time. <laughs> yeah. The next oh, score is the Wolseley. most important. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh good I'll tackle. I'll tell you what, that, 
that player looks a lot like Hitler. <laughs> oh. Only a Nazi would say something like that. <laughs> you know who likes sports, don't you? Oh, <laughs> shit. Ah, but see, the uh, the Nazis didn't like rugby league, though. No, they, no, they did. They like oh. the Olympic sports. Yeah. They also, tackle. they also didn't like rugby league in France. See the guy who made that tackle? He had a cramp like 90 seconds ago. He's having another yeah. one now. It's a miracle recovery. Jesus lives. He's now having a back cramp and a stomach cramp. And a pride cramp. Yeah, your massive pride cramp. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, big hit. Oh. Crunching tackle. Crunching tackle there on the wing. Man, have a haircut. Though. Young Martin of Fire there. He thinks. Young Martin of Fire. He wishes. Look at that haircut, though. <laughs> popular in 1992. It was, yes. I remember. Well, I've got to say, of all the Challenge Cup finals I've watched, this ranks in the last two or three. <laughs> I don't know. This, this has been it's the been most... Inter- terrible. This has been terrible. About as good most, as it gets. This has been the most entertaining Challenge Cup I've ever um, had to sit through, and it's been not because of the football. <laughs> Shut up, Hitler. <laughs> Damn Nazis! Damn Warrington. Well, if they can get through this set without cramping, they'll be happy. I reckon there'll be a cramp there. It's got to be a cramp. Oh, he's slow. Oh, oh I thought there might have been a cramp there. He looked crampish. I want one more cramp. There'll be Come a cramp on. here shortly. A real hard cramp too. Oh, he's the dropped that. Oh, he's it off. It oh, no. He was offside. How can he dive on it? Exactly. Okay, Saints have got a minute and a half to score three tries. They're still acting like it's game on. Yeah, they are. There's nothing going on here. Very slow play of the ball. Oh, a prop throwing a long ball. Thinks he's Ricky Stewart. Looked like a little... Look like a little sighting of fucking Mary McGregor there on the bench for Warrington. I don't know if you saw that, the bald head. <laughs> He'd probably be doing a lot better for Saints if he was over there. I think he would. <laughs> He's the best Saints, Saints coach of all time in England. <laughs> oh, that's a shocker play of the ball. How's that allowed? There's a crap grubber. And the yeah, nose wrap it up. up. Wrap it up, mate. Now Here they'll start the talking shit to each other. Come here. There's Big a, hug the, there he is, Mary McGregor. Oh, the, the, the man with no chin gives a kiss, and here's another cramp. There you go. There you go. Here's the cramp. Oh, oh there it is. There, there's a bit Big of a... Big smile, too. There's a bit of a... Wink, wink, nose, nose. It was nose. a happy cramp. Oh, yeah. Ten bucks says they start fighting. Here comes another cramp. You reckon a fight? Yeah, that's what they do, the palms. They start talking shit. Get a couple of pisses into him. <laughs> well, didn't get a fight there or a cramp. Go on, we got we've still no, got they'll time. fight each other. The winning team will fight each other at some point later tonight. Oh, they'll fight be... each other over the gravy. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> Fucking gravy. You can lock that in. Gravy wars are big over there. There's what another... the War of the Roses was over. Hey, gravy. That's right. Well, you've got very, you've got very good historical knowledge, League Freak. You leak out from out there. You know what I, you're doing. I'm actually quite a smart person. I just don't let it. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody you... that says any difference a fucking Nazi too? <laughs> well done. Did, did you know that actually Freaky and I were both ducks of our primary schools? I only had 20 kids to compete with, though, so it's not like that was a big thing. <laughs> and I got mine in Mount Druitt. <laughs> so, you know, don't be surprised about our level of intelligence. We are, we've are we been up there for a long time as far as intellect goes. Gentlemen. Gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure, but since um, God, Godwin's law has been enacted and you're both now Nazis... Yeah. It was a pleasure watching this game with you. I don't give a yeah, fuck about who won or who played, but... Oh, mate, absolutely. Um, honour and pleasure. Thanks for having on. me on your show. Thanks for having me on your show, man. Yeah, it was awesome having you on. Absolutely. All right. Take it easy. I'm going to go watch Game of Thrones now. 
I'm sure at some point somebody is going to rape their sister or something, so uh, it should be good. <laughs> but you know what? The one, thing, the one thing Game of Thrones doesn't have that Rugby League does is leg cramps. Yeah. Leg cramps. <laughs> you won't see a single dragon over there have a fucking leg cramp in Game of Thrones because they're soft. For some reason, for some reason, uh, leg cramps in Game of Thrones, like, they always spring outwards. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't Shit. supposed to happen. It's it's like trying to move a futon. <laughs> it's like just... <laughs> always dangerous. Well, there right. we go. I'll see you later. Okay. Take okay, it easy. See you, Thanks for dropping in. Hey, but, but Fergo, if you ever want to, like, um, talk about OBS or whatever, just hit me up if you, there's anything you want to know. <laughs> Yeah, we'll do, mate. We'll do. I, should, I need to do that more often too. You're laughing, so I'll yeah. take that as a no. <laughs> right. See you later. That's more the yeah, fact right. I'd, I'd be clueless no matter what you told me. Where's that, huh? Where? Yeah. I'm, I'm like a 90 year old man when it comes to that. Oh, garbage! You've got a big new uh, shit hot computer. I know you do, so it's all good. <laughs> all righty, mate. All right, catch you later. Catch you later, Adolf. See ya. <laughs> Cheers. See ya. That was fascinating and brilliant. Yeah, it was good fun. Now, um, I think I'm going to have to find a way to stitch these two episodes together as well, too. Yeah, there'll be some way. Um, we'll so, do that once before. I haven't even turned this off yet. Should I turn it off? Uh, the the stream. Yeah. Uh, let's see if there's anyone still listening. All right. Uh, that's someone listening. Let's see if there are any comments. Uh, we should, we should, I don't know. We should address those if there's any yeah there's not letting me scroll for any comments so that's <laughs> that's a bad sign okay um yeah the first has been saved so i'm just going to piece these things these two bits together excellent when's that one 24 oh, okay that's the one that i'm currently on that's the one now how long is that one too easy because one might be from yesterday the way the computer's looking at it, I'm guessing. Yes. Yep. Yeah, because it goes from when the episode started. Yeah, yeah. If you're still listening, this is a fascinating talk. You can tell the drop-off once a <laughs> professional like Boogie's been on to what we do with Dish Up. <laughs> um, who would be the uh, man of the match for this game? Oh, man. Uh, Ratchford. Why not? Yeah, no. just because he gave us so many talking points. Yeah, or or in lieu of that, if you don't know, just have a guess and say the halfback, whoever that was. You know what? I've got no idea who their halfback was, eh? Nor I. That's Def- definitely Ratchford. There he is. There he is. Which team would he play for if he got an NRL deal? <laughs> um... <laughs> Jeez, like <laughs> I don't even know that he could get a, like a Queensland or a New South Wales Cup deal. Do you reckon the Titans did sign him? No, even they're not that bad. They did sign Watkins. That's true. He also hasn't got any better. Oh, it's you know what it is uh, today is Melbourne versus the Gold Coast Titans, so it's going to be interesting to see what the scoreline is for that one. Yeah. That has the potential to be um, very bad for the Gold Coast. It really does. So, uh, Justin Holbrook, he's just lost the Challenge Cup final. He's about to watch mm. his new club get absolutely dipped by the storm. Yeah, and he's he owns a new vest. <laughs> yeah. There he is. There he is right there. It's weird that he wore the red tie. Yeah, odd choice. It's yeah, odd it sort he... of just doesn't go with it. It's odd that he wore that entire ensemble. Yeah. He looks like some sort of ambassador for the Bears. He looks like, um, if you gave him a hat, he looks like he'd, he'd be good in the Untouchables. <laughs> like he'd be the, uh, he'd be the mob's, like, accountant. <laughs> yeah, he did. Or if he got one of those hats with a little tag in the side of it, he'd look like a, a journalist from the 1940s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, 
he's actually looks like he's somewhat smiling there, despite the fact his team got owned by oh, yeah. the side they should have flogged. Yeah, I was thinking that myself. Hey, he looks. He doesn't look unhappy enough. Yeah, especially for a bloke who's going to be coaching the Titans next year. Yeah, he should be disappointed just in life in general. Yeah, well, I've lost today, and things are actually going to get worse. Yeah. Wow. He's got a lot to say. He's very wordy. Yeah. wonder how long that will go for him on the Gold Coast. You just know that he's given credit to Warrington, and... He's proud of his boys, and well, I mean, what else is there to say, really? They didn't turn up. Uh, we played like utter shit. Finals for this. Well, it was not a good game. Let's nah, be honest. That was dark. Should we see what else we yeah. tell him? Yeah, yeah. Let's see what else we got. How about this one? Nah. <laughs> How about not? <laughs> uh, there's so much on here. My goodness. Yeah, it's... I'll tell you what, Boxtel, they make it difficult sometimes. <laughs> well, apparently that's total divas. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, this show's always on whenever we're doing a live stream. Yeah, my 600-pound life. It's really weird. It's like, why is it always on whenever we do the live stream? Oh. <clears throat> Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. It looks like a pair of her arms look like a pair of drumsticks that have been uh got far too much outer coating on them in the from the deep fry. <laughs> <laughs> oh roll around a bit more. My goodness. That's, they uh, always live in those, like, houses that have been... They used to be trailers, but now they're turned into a house. You know why? Like, every, every single time. It's really weird. You know why? Why? So when they actually do end up getting heart failure, they're going to be taken to the hospital. You can just hook it onto the back of a truck and just drive them there. You don't have to worry about trying to get them out of it. <laughs> just, yeah. You can just cut the side of it with a reciprocating saw. Yeah. Wow. There's a dog that doesn't get to eat much. <laughs> Deceptively athletic, though. <laughs> it's, it's a, you know, most dogs are quite optimistic. Mm. And despite the fact that that human's been eating all its food, it still thinks it's going to get fed. Let's see what else is on. This is getting horrible. Yeah. Oh, the West Indies versus India. The cricket at the moment. England, 2 for 119. 2 for 100. Jeez, they're doing all right. And Joe Root's on 57. Denley's on 39, not out. The bowlers need to step up, get it yeah. done. They're not... The England's actually finally being smart with the way they're batting. They're not trying to score runs fast. They're just trying to score runs whenever an opportunity comes around. Just accumulate. Yeah, which is intelligent given there's so much bloody time left. Hey, what did we think about that um, that no try? I mean, that was a that was a pretty bad call, hey. Yeah. I mean, in, in it, real speed, I thought it, it, I thought to myself like that looked like it could have been a try. They should have at least looked at, at it. At least looked at. That was the first thing I thought. Is that it at least deserved to be looked at? Mm. And they just went no. Nah. And this is the thing I was I was sort of getting at is that is that funny if that happened in the NRL. Mm. And we know this would be a fact because it's happened in the World Cup. Mm. Remember, it was it England versus Tonga in the semi-final, and Tonga um. Tonga scored a try. England scored a try right on full time, and wasn't too sure whether it was a try or not. Mm. And the referee made the correct decision, but decided not to use the video, and people went nuts over it. What if he got it wrong? Um, what if he got it wrong? He should have used the video. And you think that's right? All this time you've been advocating for less video, and the rest should be making their own call. And when there's a, when they finally do it, so I oh, should have used the video. Make up your fucking mind, people. Mm. <coughs> yeah. So I mean, I, we've, I've said before, I personally would, I could go without any video referee at all, and just yeah, live and die by 
what happens on the field. And I'm always shocked at how good some of the decisions the referees make on the run are. I, I, there's sometimes, but there's some obviously sometimes where they just they miss it. There was an incident today where um, it was Kalen Ponga was basically I felt like he was taken out before he got a chance to even go for the ball. And I thought that the referees just must have missed it. For whatever reason, they just missed that second of of the game. And so they sent it to the video referee. But then the video referee said there was nothing wrong with it, which was pretty pretty interesting. And, uh, yeah, gave it a try to the West Tigers. And, yeah, I mean, you can't say it cost the game at all because they got flogged, the Newcastle Knights. But um, the, the one thing I can't cop is when the video ref makes a mistake. Yeah, that that's the worrying part is when they and it's a mistake they shouldn't make. Like sometimes they can make yeah. a mistake because they don't have adequate vision. Fair enough, you can cop that. But when they when that's not an issue, when they've got clear vision and they still get the call wrong, mm-hmm. that deserves to be criticised. Absolutely, that's mm-hmm. the only part of refereeing that deserves to be criticised to the hilt. Everything else is on the fly and. Mistakes can happen that way, and we should just all accept it. But when you've got all that time, all those angles, there's no excuse. No, not at all. And the thing that, and I think it's all sport should start going back to it, is that it's a condition of sport that if you're going to play a sport where there's a referee, you have to abide by the referee, and you have to go by the fact that there's going to be a human being refereeing the game, and they might make mistakes, but so will you. And we've really gone away from that. And, and there's this ridiculous super accountability that referees supposedly have on them that players literally don't have on them. And I would like to see a big push and to make people realise that if you're playing a sport, yeah, there's the referees are going to be there. It's part of the game. Like, it's the part of the game as much as, you know, how, how thick the grass is or if it's raining, or if it's sunny, or if it's windy. It's just part of the sporting contest. You've got to overcome all of it. Fully agree. And yet for some reason... Well, we know the reason why the referees are targeted so heavily. It's because it's a news cycle that will never die. Because the referees are always going to be there. And if you constantly abuse them and constantly bash them, it's a never-ending cycle for news. And that's why they do it. Yeah, and I mean, there was a, a real clickbait, um, and it was something that I saw you comment on from Fox Sports, and they were talking about a controversial call in the game. It might have been that one, actually. No, no, it was um, um, Mit- Mitchell Moses when he he kicked at um, whoever it was. Oh, yeah. Kicked, kicked them in the right. arms, knocked the ball out, and got penalised because you're not supposed to you know, lash out with your foot towards someone's face, which is what he yeah, and- blatantly did. And it was literally like, it, it basically read exactly as the rule does in the rule book. It, there was nothing controversial about it. And yet they're trying to stir it up like it's some controversial thing. And the other thing is, like, they they make so many really, I mean, that was a straightforward call. Like, yeah. the referee would have got in trouble if they didn't give that call. And But they call it controversial. And it's like, no, there's no controversy. Yeah. It just is what it is. That's right. They just think that because it's something that doesn't happen very often, or because it was it awarded a penalty try, then therefore it's a controversy. Well, it would be like saying when um, Bill Harrigan gave the penalty try for the Melbourne Storm in 1999. Mm-hmm. It's like saying, well, that's a controversial moment. It wasn't. It just was what it was. Like, it was a really straightforward, by-the-book call. Further, um, it, what, takes, it takes away from the refereeing because what it should be saying is that was good refereeing, but they don't. It's yeah. controversial, which kind of smears the referee's performance. Yeah, exactly. When they actually did the and right it, thing and they were absolutely spot on perfect with their decision there. Yeah, and I mean, when the mainstream media opens up, I mean, it, it attacks the integrity of the referee and it attacks their... You know, when you're questioning calls that are just black and white correct, like, what is that about? You know, and it it really is. It's just clickbait. Yeah, it's designed to just create more news. Yeah, and like, I think that more and more, because they're not writing about what's actually happening, happening in the game itself, 
they're going for those sorts of angles. And, I, I mean, there's been so many, like, lines put out there this year by the mainstream media that you could say, like, they know they're wrong, but they know that they'll get a terrible reaction. And that terrible reaction comes up as hits at the end of the day and reads. Yep. Completely agree, man. It's, the thing is, it's so bloody obvious for me and for you, obviously, mm. that that's exactly mm. what's going on. But yet it mm. still fucking works. And that's yeah, the thing that gets crazy. me is, how can it be so obvious yet still so effective? I just don't get that. Yeah, I don't understand it either. I mean, but then again, I mean, there are times when we will look at what the news stories are and we'll be like, don't click on it, don't <laughs> click on it, ah, and it gets you. But it's a bit different for us because we're trying to find something to shit on, I guess. <laughs> but the, the other thing is too, it also, it it plays into some of the, it plays into the human, how humans are made up. You know, you focus on the negative thing because you're always trying to improve or get rid of the the negative thing out of your life or everyone's life around you. So you focus more on negative stuff sometimes than positive stuff. And so that's how the clickbait, I mean, it's hardwired into us. Yeah. I wonder, though, it's kind of like a chicken and egg argument. Is that a human condition or is that something that's been made into us via the media? Have the media conditioned us to be like that? No, I think I think we've been like you think about if you're going back to caveman days, it if you've got a problem, you have to sort it out because it could bring down the whole community. So you got to focus on it. You got to make sure that you either do something about it or get rid of the problem. And it comes from that, man. It comes from that. Well, see, the thing is, the reason I ask that question is because I, you know, obviously, looking at a lot of newspaper articles and stuff like that from especially World War One that period yeah yeah a lot of the newspaper articles then would talk about how great the australians are doing at war you know oh we're kicking the german asses here and we're kicking the you know the the greeks over here and we're doing brilliant here and we're doing brilliant there mm-hmm. and go over and help support the guys and it's all promotional stuff to try and talk it up and get more support on board and the mm-hmm. media were a huge part of that recruitment drive mm-hmm. whereas i don't think they would play that role at all if if war was you know something that happened today and they needed you know people to come fight the the war they would go purely for the misery angle see i disagree i think that they would go they would jump all in on it like and i think you've only got to see what happens when um like when there is a big war effort that we like do you remember when we, we went into east timor I mean, I'm pretty sure they had some sort of telethon or something for that. They had some sort of concert or something. It, it, it kind of depends a bit, though, I think. Um, when was that East Timor thing? Late 90s? The, uh, I feel like it was in the early noughties, hey? Yeah. See, uh, 99. It started in 99. There you go. Um thing is if it's like in australia if it's a liberal government that starts that sort of thing then most mm. of the media will be behind it mm. i'm not too sure what would happen because i've never experienced it whether you know what would how the media would behave if it was a labor government that started it yeah i'm trying to think um i, I guess we had a labor government when the first Iraq war was around, but we, I don't think we're involved in that too much. Um, we sent some troops I over, I believe when, when the Americans asked for them, because we, yeah, our, our PM at the time, geez, we're getting political now. Um, yeah. <laughs> our PM at the time, Bob, Bob Hawke was, was pretty close with the Americans. Mm. Oh, oh, what the hell? You have a phone call. Get FaceTime. Hang on, hang on. I'll have to decline it and say, um, I'm on Skype. <laughs> Whoops! What, what happened to our what, what happened to our rule of answering phone calls on air? <laughs> okay, uh, let me. No, no, it. it's all right. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Let me do it. <laughs> okay. I'll do it on my phone. Hey, can you hear me? I'm on. I'm on doing a podcast right now. 
<laughs> so you're on speakerphone uh, yeah. now. That's fine. I'm driving. Okay. Yeah, we, uh, if that first try for us would have been given, it would have been a completely different game. Yeah, well, we were surprised that the, the first try wasn't given. Like, it seemed like they should have gone to the video referee. Were you blown up when you saw it? Oh, yeah. It was a try. It was a try all day. I'm not... I think what the ref, I think what the ref did, I'm not 100 percent sure because I couldn't see the commentary properly. Yeah. Um, I think he thought that Morgan Knowles had gone over the dead ball line. Yeah. Um, but it was, he was about, he was in. It was, I was fuming. Let's put it that way. I was fuming. Yeah, it was um, bad call. Definitely should have looked at. When you, when you yeah, should have been. Mistakes in a game. Yeah. What, what, what do you do? Yeah. What can you do? Yeah, they d- look that we watched it. They they just didn't look like they turned up. It was really weird. And Warrington didn't play that much better. But you know, uh, there was just nothing. The, the Saints just didn't turn up. It was very very strange. Yeah, like literally. Yeah, it was we've, nice. been, we've been fantastic all season. It's not been like, like the last few games you've watched. I don't know what's happening, but literally every other Saints, every single other game, we've been amazing, and I just don't. It's it's Luke Freak's fault. Honestly, it fault so that's why I've not said anything anywhere. It's, is it my? Do you reckon it's my fault? So, yeah, yeah. Because like, no yeah, because I. Was I the Challenge Cup semi final last year. Yeah. Battered by Catalan, and you were there. Yep. Then you watched them live, and we were shit. Yep. And then you've watched them today, and we've got pasted. So. Yeah. Let her know that we'll be watching the Super League Grand Final when St. Helens are yeah. in. Andrew said, we'll watch the Super League Grand Final when Saints make it. Would you be comfortable with that? No, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, just do you reckon... Yeah, Coot, Coot wasn't fully fit. Coot wasn't fully fit. I don't know why. They... He's, out, he's been out for six weeks injured. And the first game they bring him back at, at Challenge Cup Final, it's like, mm, really? Yeah. Like... He's not. He's not match fit. Um, you bring him back on the biggest occasion of the year. It's not, and then he drops a stinker. Literally, nobody's on him, and it goes straight through his hands. Like, yeah. We just. We were just. We just didn't turn up. And Warrington. Warrington turned up, and they deserved the win. It's as simple as that. There's, yeah. that, that. there's nothing. Like everyone's complaining about the ref. He did. He did make some dodgy decisions. Like the first trial, he said that should have been a try. Morgan Knowles should have had that first try. Mm-hmm. And then they said Regan Grace knocked on. Um, for the Warrington for Warrington's try, mm-hmm. but it wasn't. It was um, it come off Deck Patton's chest. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a few decisions, that, but uh, you can't make you can't make that many mistakes in the game and come out with a win. It's as simple as that. Is that the worst choke you've seen St. Helens doing a final? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. They've not played like that all season. It was nice to see. Even, even, it was nice to see James Graham turn up and watch from the stands so high. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. But Prince Anna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no. Oh, shit. Yeah, no, um, I just, I, I can't, I can't see any, 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 anything, anything more, to be fair. Yeah. I, you know, you know me, I'm not biased. It just, it's one of them. It's, it's, anything can happen in a final and, Everyone's like, yeah, we've got so, like loads of people are going, yeah, we're going to put seventy on them. It's like, no, I'm not even going to say a word because we'll probably get beat, and that's yeah. what happened. So they should have put seventy on them. Yeah, they should have. Yeah, they should have put seventy on them. Andrew's saying. Yeah, we should have done. Yeah, we absolutely should have done. Yeah. And we were at full, fucking full strength as well. Everyone's come back, so that's what I was. I said that. I said that this morning. I was like, we, Warrington, I've got a few players out, and we we we're, we're at full strength. We're going to come out. And they're probably going to beat us. So I, I was like, I was thinking that this morning. I was like, oh my god, please no, just. And they beat us without, obviously without Blake fucking Austin, which is even worse. <laughs> yeah, Britain's Blake Austin. I actually have only of all of the NRL and the Challenge Cup game, I've only got one tip right so far this weekend. So I'm I'm going so bad with the results. Oh, and that's Warrington beating Saints. No, no. I, I tipped St. Helens to win by, like, I thought, I was hoping they'd put on a big score line, but uh, maybe it's yeah. just Warrington's year. Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> you can piss off laughing in the background as well. <laughs> oh, shit. 
Oh, lovely. So I'm a tad, tad, just a tad disappointed, let's put it that way. Yeah, well, that sucks that you've lost, but, you know, there's always, like, the grand final left for you, and, you know, what can you do? Yeah, we'll probably get fucking Wigan. It'll be probably a Saints Wigan fucking final, and we'll get twatted by Wigan, who've been shit all season. Well, I, it, what are you breaking for, you stupid twat? <laughs> I'm great, sorry, I'm driving. It's all right. Well, well... Yeah, I'm hoping that Hull FC makes the grand final because, um, yeah, on form, we'd be red-hot favourites. You wouldn't. Saints would still be favourites if we got through, but we'd fucking bottle it as usual. Well, they will be favourites if we decide to do a live show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The betting markers will be watching it. No, like you two, you two <laughs> we're not a pair of pricks. We're rugby league experts. Yeah, arseholes, maybe. <laughs> pricks is a bit harsh. Yeah, that's very harsh. <laughs> I'm normally joking. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I'm sorry that they lost, and uh, I hope you yeah have an easy time at work, and uh, I'll probably talk to you later on. Yeah, no worries. I'm just literally parking up at work now. This awesome. Well, have a, yeah, have a good time at work. Yeah, I'll try. Thanks. Okay, I'll catch you. See you later. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> We've had two guests on. Wow. This feels intense. How about that? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Well, it's been a fantastic episode. I think we've done very well with it. And I think that everyone should be very happy with the entertainment that we've provided with them or them with tonight. That's right. It's a shame that the uh, my computer decided to shit itself halfway through. Yeah. But, um, we'll, I'll try and piece it together. Yeah. We might even see if we can put it up as a podcast or even if we just do the whole thing together on YouTube so people can watch it on there because it'll be a bit long. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe YouTube bar one. Hmm. Good job <laughs> for me to do now is half an hour before I go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do that between now and like 6 a.m. Yeah. Uh, that would be fantastic. <laughs> that, that's, that's what I'll be up to. Alrighty, people. Um, I suppose a few quick shout-outs and plugs and stuff. Yeah. Uh, visit The Starting Block on Twitter. The Starting Block. Drop the K at the end. Um, follow them. Um, go to Patreon and put in patreon.com forward slash rugby RL project yeah and go and give all of your money to it why not yeah go check Just... out uh, www.leaguefreak um, you'll get all our podcasts on there you'll get League Freak's opinion pieces on there um, brilliant we even get the the poll that we created NRL poll the massive poll I need to promote that again hi hey. yeah brilliant poll much better than the NRL one that's what she said. Um, and then what else is there to promote? Well, Boogie uh, Bumper. Check out Boogie Bumper, and he's he's got a, a live. Sh- he does a live show once, almost daily, I think. The daily. Yeah, boogie. the daily boogie. Yeah. Uh, check him out on Twitter as well. And yeah, we're on Virgo, Virgo Freak Pod. Yep, Virgo Freak Pod at League Freak at mm. Andrew RP. There you are. That's pretty much. Yeah. That's pretty much everything that's important, isn't it? Yep, and jump onto your podcasting app, look up Fergo and the Freak, and subscribe. Absolutely. And give us a rating and a five star. Yes, five. Always five, because that's the minimum we deserve. Yeah, yeah. And uh, on that note, we'll see you later.